Finally, the guy saw the light at the end of the tunnel. His name is Zuobai. He is an ordinary person. All he had to do was fool around and make money, but why did he end up in a place like this? And why is such a monster after him? He ran away from the monster and yelled that he didn't want to die. Finally, he approached the exit and ran into a room. He locked the heavy door behind him and caught his breath. Finally, he was saved. He looked around and realized that it was a dead end. The monster began to break into the door and he was frightened. It seems that the door will not last long. What should he do? Is he going to die just like that? Suddenly a female voice asked, Is he Zuobai? He began to look around and ask who is there. The voice told him to stop looking for her. He wouldn't see her anyway. She asked, Does he want to survive? Zuobai confirmed her words and asked what should he do. A small stone appeared in front of him and a voice told him to take this core. With this, he can defeat the monster outside, but he needs to remember not to reject the core and contain it. He reached for the core and said, he didn't have time to reject it anyway. He doesn't want to die in a place like this. He squeezed the core in his hand and the system activated. A system window asked him to wait as the survivor's cultivation system was activated. After that, the survivor cultivation system menu appeared in front of him. He said it was so cool. He has a whole menu in his head. Survivor cultivation. Strong name. He asked how to use it. The voice replied that his skills are at the bottom of the menu and points of laziness are in the upper right corner. There is also experience for pumping. Laziness is part of human nature. He can absorb points, thus increasing the level of energy. Now let him work on it diligently. He asked to go straight to the point because he is an idiot. The voice replied that the point is to accumulate these points and the easiest way to do this is to lie down. She asked what he was waiting for. Let it lay down. By leveling up he increases his strength, he remembers. He sat down on the ground and said that it was such a nasty core. All this time the monster continued to beat on the door and he asked if he would not die if he lay down now. He lay down on the ground and points of laziness began to increase to him. He has accumulated ten points of laziness. Now he needs to invest points with his thoughts. Spiritual energy increased and he said that he succeeded. Points turned into energy. He felt strength in his body and asked, Is this strength? It's all energy, the voice asked. Did he succeed? Energy usually hurts people, but he can use it. He picked up a small pebble from the floor with spiritual energy and asked if he could mentally control things like this. At the same moment, the monster broke through the door and strong dust rose. The monster entered the room and Zuobai was horrified. What the hell is this? He extended his arms forward. He needed to fight this spiritual energy. He sent energy to the monster and it got to his hand. Zuobai was happy that it worked and stopped the monster. But the monster clenched its fist and dispelled the energy. After that, it pounded its chest with its fists and rushed to attack. Zuobai's energy is still weak, but the monster is already attacking. He needs to hurry up and turn his laziness points into spiritual energy. His energy began to rise, but the monster was already very close. He tensed up, and the spiritual energy stopped growing. He used up all the points of laziness, and his body was filled with strength. He attacked the monster and it hit the wall and then died. Zuobai said it wasn't bad. It was amazing. He fell to the floor and said he was so strong. Time passed and he woke up. First he smelled peroxide and saw a strange ceiling, he thought. Where is it? He turned his head to the side and saw a girl. He asked, who is she? She took a bite of a cookie and looked at him. She quickly put the box of cookies on the table and told him to eat his cookies. She shouted that the foundling was awake and ran away, saying that she didn't steal his cookies. Zuobai took a box of cookies and said, who cares about her cookies? He looked into the box and saw that there was only one piece left. He tasted the cookie and immediately spat it out, saying that the cookie was long overdue. He noticed his reflection in the mirror and asked how he got so young. He looked 17 or 18 years old. He remembered that when a monster was chasing him, the more he ran, the easier it was for him. It seems that at that time, these physical changes were going on. He patted his head and said that he was handsome when he was young. The doctor came into the room, behind whom the girl was hiding. He asked if he woke up. He needs to go with him and register. The girl asked, Where are the cookies? They left the room and walked forward down the corridor. Zuobai noticed that all sides of the wall, it looks like a bunker. He noticed children who were fighting over food and thought that their standard of living was also low. The girl hung on the doctor's arm and said that she wanted to eat. He asked, 
Hadn't she just eaten? He agreed and said that he would bring her food. Children peeking out of the rooms in Zuobai wondered what happened to all these children. There are children of all races here. What is this secret base? After he passed out, the system still exists. He spent a lot of time in a hospital bed. Then why doesn't he have sloth points? The doctor opened the door to the room and told Zuobai to come in. Zuobai sat on a chair. The doctor asked what his name is, where he is from, how old is he? Zuobai gave his name and said that he was from China, but he did not remember his age. The doctor asked China? He had never heard of such a thing. The doctor sighed and said it didn't matter. Zuobai laughed and scratched his head. He thought he had never heard of China. Suddenly he realized that he did not speak Chinese. Maybe the system introduced him to another language. The doctor filled in information about him and said that from now on he can live here. Maybe they didn't have long to live. Zobai looked at him in disbelief, and the doctor asked if he didn't know. This world has come to an end. Forty-two people on this base are the only people left on the planet, and if you count it, then these are forty-three people. Zobai was horrified. Only forty-three people? What happened to this world? What about the monster that was chasing him? He needs to calm down and wait for what will happen next. He stayed at that location and watched the entire base for a week. He found out that this is a closed underground base, which is divided into five levels. The first level is the danger zone, which is said to be like hell. If someone enters it without special protection, they will die. The second and third floors are living quarters. The fourth floor is a warehouse with a lot of supplies, and the fifth floor is a laboratory that only Dr. Zhuang can enter. The room he is in has no windows. It looks like a prison. This base is full of children, except for one adult, Dr. Zhuang. How will he feed all these children? The girl in the room was delighted and said that the doctor had returned with food. She began to eat, and the doctor held out a plate of food to Zuobai. He said that now there is a shortage of food. There is only this artificial food and nutritious cookies. Zuobai brought the food to his mouth and tasted it. His face twisted, and he said it was terrible. He put the plate on the bed and said he forgot that even those cookies tasted better. The girl immediately ran to his plate and asked if her older brother didn't want to eat, right? The doctor snatched the plate from Aisha and said that she would vomit if she ate anymore. She's already full. Her brain just doesn't react normally. Aisha started jumping around trying to reach her plate and screaming that she wants to eat. She didn't eat. The doctor adjusted his glasses and told Zuobai that he forgot to introduce himself. He can call him Dr. Zhuang, and this is Aisha, his roommate. He can ask her any questions he has. Zuobai smiled nervously and asked if he could trust her. She's not going to eat him at night, is she? Aisha bit the doctor's hand and he told Zuobai not to worry. She was just a bit of a glutton. Although she is a glutton, she does not eat people. Zuobai asked, is he sure? She sucks his blood. The doctor told him not to worry. She's just a little crazy when it comes to food. After eating, they must go to the classes taught by the doctor. The knowledge of the children living here is the same as his. Some of it is the same. Some is different. What he knows about history and geography they have never heard. Mathematics, physics, natural sciences, all the same that he knows. He heard that today there will be a special lesson. The doctor pulled off the cloth and said that the lesson would be called the lesson of the demons of heaven. In this lesson, they will take apart this three-eyed demon. The outside world has long been overrun by demons. They must wield the power to defeat these demons. This three-eyed wolf demon, most of all, loves to fight and kill. He has the ability to turn into a thousand different creatures. To pacify this demon, the main thing is to have a strong psyche and not get infected with a murderous aura. They should never be afraid to die and never be afraid to kill. Zobai thought what he was saying. Could the monster that was chasing him be a heavenly demon? The doctor said that hell had already broken out outside the base with rampant demons, only this base, which he built with his own hands, is the only safe place. Zuobai thought, does anyone think that Dr. Zhuang's words are suspicious? Could it be that hell is outside? This is all true? By the way, Dr. Zhuang is the only adult in this place. Children are weak and easy to control. Children believe everything Dr. Zhuang says. But what if this Dr. Zhuang is talking nonsense, and if everything is fine outside the base? He must go outside the base to be sure of this and find out what is really going on. While he was thinking about it, a boy was watching him intently. Time has passed. No sooner had Zuobai escaped from the base than strange things happened during the night. In the middle of the night he heard footsteps and wondered if there was someone there. 
He remembered how Aisha told him not to leave the room at night and not to open the door, no matter what he heard. He thought, didn't they say that you can't go out at night? Then why does he hear footsteps? Maybe it stopped at their door. He crept up on tiptoe and leaned his ear against the door. Suddenly the door handle began to twitch and he screamed in fear, asking who was there. The handle stopped twitching and he listened again. Is he standing? Suddenly out of the corner of his eye he saw a shadow and turned around. A huge cat opened its mouth and was ready to pounce on him. After a while he woke up from a nightmare, and above him there was still the shadow of a cat. He noticed the silhouette of a cat and slowly turned his head in the direction of it, and the silhouette said that he was finally awake. But it was not a cat, but Aisha, who said that she would eat his breakfast. He still would not. Zuobai asked, Is it already morning? She tilted her head to the side and he asked if something happened last night. She pointed her finger at the door and said that the door was always locked so no one could enter. She asked if he had a nightmare. She did not wait for an answer and jumped off her chair with the words that she would go to the dining room. Zuobai noticed her hairstyle. It reminded him of the very cat he saw at night. He thought that only Aisha was in the room with him last night. Is it possible that this monster is her? The day passed and the night came again. Zuobai lay on the bed and looked at the burning stick on the sink. Aisha was afraid that he would have nightmares again and asked Dr. Zhuang for an incense stick. He shifted his gaze to Aisha and thought that this child couldn't be some kind of monster, right? He began to fall asleep and thought that the wand seemed to be working. Through sleep he felt that his body was itching and something was pressing on him. He opened his eyes and vaguely saw the silhouette of a cat. He thought, is it really a demon? He quickly sat up on the bed and saw a small white cat in front of him. No, it's not a demon, it's a cat. The cat asked in a female voice. Is he Zuobai? Zuobai asked in surprise. Is she telling him this? He thought it strange, but the voice was right in his head. He remembered that voice and asked if she was the woman who had told him about the system. The cat lay down and displeasedly confirmed his words. She asked if he was shocked by everything. He is so timid, so unpredictable, so stupid. Why is her destiny named after him? Who did he bribe? He asked her to stop and asked if she brought him here. Lately, laziness points are not increasing. He can't even use his powers. The cat said that if he wants to know everything, then let him find her and take her away from here. He repeated, take her out of here. What does she mean? She replied that the she he was seeing now was a dream she had left him with the last of her spiritual power. She began to disappear and said that her body was in this underground base. The cat disappeared and Zuobai immediately lay down on the bed. Li lay down. Why didn't she say before leaving where exactly on the base? Her body. Time passed. He searched the second and third floors. The first floor cannot be entered due to pollution, and the fifth floor cannot be accessed by anyone except Dr. Zhuang. He had to take the opportunity to help move supplies to search the fourth floor first. The guy pushed him and asked him why he was lazy. Let him go to work, Zuobai thought. Isn't that the guy he went to class with? He got mad and thought he was an arrogant brat. He noticed the doctor and calmed down. He lives here. He is fed, which means he needs to behave normally. He will have a chance to escape, and this cat did not tell him everything and made him work hard. If he finds her body, the system will work and he can protect you. After a while, he finally got rid of the doctor and that annoying guy. He needs to quickly search the fourth floor and find the cat's body. He began to rummage through the shelves looking for her body, but he couldn't find it even on the fourth floor. Then where is this cat? He will not get to the first floor. On the second to fourth floors, her body is not. Only the fifth floor is not searched, a laboratory that only Dr. Zhuang can enter. In other words, the real body of the cat must be in the lab on the fifth floor. Suddenly he heard someone's voice with interference, which says that this is a heavenly detachment. He went to the source of the sound, to the red container, and heard the voice repeat several times that it was the heavenly aid squad. Zuobai looked into the container, and a voice said that they provide worldwide freedom of action for people. Zuobai saw a radio from which a voice was heard, saying that the survivors who received the news were being asked. He immediately dropped the flashlight and ran to the radio. He took the radio in his hands and his voice fell silent. He thought, what is the heavenly rescue team? Are there people there? He remembered how the doctor said that at this base, the last people left alive. Is Dr. Zhuang lying? There are living people outside and they can even save them. But why does he hide it from them? 
he saw next to the radio a piece of paper on which it was written not to open the door. Otherwise it would just eat them. My chest hurts more and more. Something is about to jump out. He hadn't seen Jack in a long time. He must have been eaten. What should they do? Zuobai thought it was a diary, but who wrote it? He looked at the wall and saw a bunch of drawings of different monsters. Is it all a picture of demons? This place is pretty secret. Who did it? Suddenly he heard some sounds from a metal cabinet. He got scared and the door began to slowly open. He thought, Who is it? Is Dr. Zhuang? A girl with long black hair peeked out of the closet and Zuobai trembled with fear. It's a ghost. The girl began to threaten him with a metal pipe and asked how he found this place. She thought it was bad he found her secret room. Zuobai opened his eyes and saw that it was just a girl. He awkwardly scratched the back of his head and said that he accidentally heard the radio and followed the sound. He asked if that was her secret, right? He apologized for breaking in and told her not to worry because he wouldn't tell anyone about it. The girl said that her name was Alice, and after that she apologized for threatening him. Zuo Bai thought she was Alice. He remembers it was the girl who sat behind him in class. She asked what he had already seen here. Did he think she was testing him? Why shouldn't he take the opportunity to question her? He replied that he saw the diary and drawings of demons on the wall, her supply of supplies and relays to communicate with the outside world. He asked what she was up to. Alice thought that everything was revealed. What should she do, tell him? But can he be trusted? Zuobai thought that this girl had a secret. She did all this behind Dr. Zhuang's back. Then he would try something. He asked how she thinks Dr. Zhuang is hiding something. Alice asked what he was talking about. Dr. Zhuang is an adult who takes care of them. Zuobai noticed from her expression that she was lying and did not trust the doctor. He told her that he thinks that Dr. Zhuang, and this is the base, that with him and everyone else, something is wrong. Alice was surprised, and he noticed that her caution was crushed. He asked when she first became suspicious of the doctor. She replied that the children at the base disappeared from time to time, and after a while they returned, but they became crazy and strange. Bandu and she thought it was strange. Zuobai thought, Bandu is that arrogant upstart, that arrogant... She continued, and said that one day she found this diary in bed, and then they decided to go in search of the truth. They searched almost five floors, everywhere they could, but they couldn't find the missing children. But Bandu disappeared during the search, and when he returned, he became a different person. She showed him the diary again, and he said he didn't remember it. Zuobai asked what happened before he disappeared. She replied that he went to the laboratory on the fifth floor. The lab is equipped with a fingerprint lock that only Dr. Zhuang can unlock. After he returned from the lab, his personality changed. Why did the doctor bring him to the lab? Those kids that are missing, it looks like Dr. Zhuang did it. Maybe it's all Dr. Zhuang's hoax and there is no end of the world. She so wants to get out of this base to the surface. Zuobai asked how they could get out. Alice replied that there is direct access to the outside world. They need to find an electronic key that will open this door. She searched the base with Bandu. This electronic key can only be found in the laboratory on the fifth level. Zuobai thought that the cat's body should also be in the lab. Whether it's the so-called electronic map, the missing children, Bandu's personality change, the cat, the survivor's system, or the secret of the base, and even Dr. Zhuang, it's all connected to the fifth floor of the lab. He needs to find a way to get in there and see the truth, he asked. But how to break the lock and get into this laboratory? She replied that you can go through the ventilation. They Bandu found a ventilation pipe that goes straight to the laboratory. She wanted to go down with him to find the electronic key. But before she could enter and explore the ventilation, Bandu's personality changed dramatically. She thought Dr. Zhuang saw her, so she didn't go in. Zuobai patted his chest and asked her to tell him the location of the ventilation ducts, and he would get the key. Alice didn't say anything, and he told her not to worry. He's not just trying to help. He wants to get out, too. He wants to see with his own eyes what it's like there. They will see if the end of the world is true or not. All this time, Bandu was hiding behind the door and eavesdropping on their conversation. After some time, Zuobai was sneaking down the dark corridor and thought that the base was pretty scary at night. He couldn't even see anything. He remembered how he had shown the drawing to Alice and asked what it was. There was a picture of a huge cat in the drawing, and she said that it was a demon eater. Zuobai walked down the corridor and thought that this cat could eat people. What did he do to deserve this? 
He groped for the corner of the wall and was glad that he had finally made it to the fifth floor entrance. Even if it's a dragon's lair, he should go down there and check. He got excited and thought he was a man with the power of the gods. Alice said that he would see a door below. He went downstairs, opened the door, and it creaked loudly. Zuobai was worried because there was such a loud noise coming from the door. Then there is a long corridor. According to Alice, the vent pipe to the lab should be nearby. He continued to move along the wall and felt something soft and wondered what he felt. He said out loud that it couldn't be. The girl shut his mouth with her hand and said it was her, Alice. She thought he would be here tonight and decided to go down with him. Zuobai began to choke and said he understood. He asked her to let go of his neck as she was strangling him. Alice trembled with fear and said with horror on her face that she was not strangling him. Zuobai needs to use spiritual energy to scout the area. He extended his hand forward and released energy asking who was there. He looked into the pitch darkness and said that there was definitely someone there. After his words, Alice clung to him and trembled with fear. He measured spiritual energy and found out that the limit of use is ten meters away from him. Spiritual energy can sense space and transmit sensations to him. If he uses it often, he will quickly get tired. The entrance doors to this corridor were closed when he arrived. There is a dead end ahead, and the front and back walls are closed. How did this person get in? And where did he hide after he attacked him? Did he hide? Alice was very close in front of him, so no one could get between them to grab his neck. That's right. There is a ventilation pipe. This man came out through the ventilation. He was not far from the ventilation pipe, and this person could choke him and escape through the ventilation. All this time, someone could watch them from the ventilation pipe. Zuobai had an idea and told Alice to go with him. He opened the hatch and said that, as he thought, the ventilation hatches were open. He wondered if his attacker was still here. Why did he attack him? Is it possible that their whereabouts have been discovered? He picked up Alice and said that it could be dangerous there so she should stay close to him, okay? She agreed and told him not to scare her anymore. They climbed through the ventilation and ended up in the laboratory. Zuobai scouted the situation and said that she would be the first. She said it's so high up here. What is he going to do? He lowered her down with spiritual power and she was surprised. After that, he jumped out of the ventilation and cushioned the fall with spiritual power. He can use spiritual power in many ways, such as lifting and lowering it. She asked how he did it. He replied that it was a long story and offered to find something to start with. And they sat down and he thought, where should they start looking? They began to quietly move around the laboratory, and Zuobai thought, why does he feel like someone is watching them here? They walked past a glass capsule of liquid, and someone inside tapped the glass with their palm. Alice turned around and was horrified, she softly said. Bandu's name and Zuobai turned around to see what happened. Bandu floated in the capsule, only the upper part of his body remained. Bandu looked at his girlfriend, and Alice started screaming, what's wrong with him? Zuobai hugged her and told her not to be so nervous. He stroked her head and told her to calm down. First they will find the electronic key, find a way to get out and contact the rescuers, and then come back and save everyone. Alice calmed down and agreed. A female voice called out to Zuobai and asked if he needed a system. Let him help her. Zuobai turned around and saw a cat asking to be let out of here. He already found it. Using spiritual power, he broke the glass capsule and the cat climbed out through a small hole. She smiled, but at the same moment she attacked him and said that now it was all hers. She called him an idiot and said that now she will eat him. He grabbed the cat with spiritual energy and hit the floor several times. Bandu and Alice were surprised, and Zuobai asked the cat if she was trying to trick him. He knew what she was up to. Alice said it was amazing. Big Brother can subdue demons. Answered that it was nothing and a squeak was heard from behind. Someone has come, so they need to hide quickly. The doctor entered the laboratory and placed the electronic key on the table. They looked out from behind the table and looked at the key. The cat said that this person was here and jumped Zuobai in the head. He began to feel his forehead and wondered how she got into him. What did she do? While he was feeling his forehead, the doctor approached Bandu and told him that now was the time for the injection. Zuobai peeked out from behind the cover and thought that he needed to figure out how to take the key and get out of here. The doctor finished giving the injection and asked, Where is the trash can? He noticed a trash can that was right in front of Zuobai with Alice. Zuobai turned his head and saw that there was a dead end on the left, and it was too late to turn to the right. He would definitely find them. But the doctor just threw the syringe in the trash and left. 
They breathed a sigh of relief, and Zuobai pulled the electronic key from the table. Then he looked at Alice and she nodded to him. Finally they found the electronic key. The cat called out to Zuobai and told him to take her jewel. He looked at the stone that was right in front of the doctor, and she told him to go and get it, because this thing is more important than he can imagine. He started to leave and replied that it was too dangerous, so another time. The cat told him that without the stone, the system would not work. Hearing her words, he stopped abruptly, and Alice crashed into his back. With the help of spiritual energy, he took the stone and the doctor turned around in surprise. He saw that Zuobai lifted all the objects in the air and then directed it at him. Zuobai told him that he was sorry, and after that he received a stone and grabbed Alice by the hand, saying that they were leaving here. He turned around and was greatly surprised when he saw that Dr. Zhuang had stopped all the objects flying at him. He realized that he knew how to use spiritual energy. After a while, Zuobai and Alice made it to the exit. They caught their breath and Zuobai said that they succeeded. Now they will open the doors and leave the base. Alice started crying and he told her not to be upset. The rescuers were there. They'll get out and then they'll find someone who comes back for everyone. She agreed with him and after that, he inserted the electronic key into the door. The door began to open and they were frozen in anticipation. After they left the base, they got sick and Zuobai wondered what happened. Some time ago. They left the base and looked around. They saw before them a beautiful night landscape. Alice looked at the starry sky and asked, Is this the sky? Fireflies were flying over the grass, which were dispersed by the happy Zuobai and Alice. They enjoyed freedom, and Alice somersaulted. They lay down on the grass and looked up at the sky. Alice said that she wants everyone else to be here. Zuobai looked up at the starry sky and said it didn't look like the end of the world. He took out the radio and put on the headphones. He doesn't know if the rescue team is transmitting a distress call on full range or not. He tuned the radio and said he hoped someone would find them. Suddenly they heard someone walking and disappeared into the grass. They saw a man in a special suit walking around and looking. He turned in their direction and through the protective helmet they could see the face of the doctor. Zuobai grabbed Alice's hand and shouted that they should run. But with the help of spiritual energy, the doctor grabbed Alice and separated her from Zuobai. He turned around and called out to her in concern. He released spiritual energy and tried to take it away from the doctor's grasp. But suddenly Alice's eyes were filled with blood and she became ill. She coughed up blood and Zuobai called out to her in concern. But suddenly he felt pain and blood came out of his mouth. His eyes turned red and he fell to his knees asking the doctor what he did with them. The doctor replied that he did nothing. The spiritual energy of this world has been completely infected. If they do not wear special protection, then their body will be destroyed. It is enough to stay here for half an hour to die. Zuobai looked at the sprout sticking out of Alice's forehead and remembered Bandu. There were also plant sprouts on the remains of his body. He was completely exhausted and drooped. The doctor took them and told him to believe him. Outside the base, the territory is uninhabitable. Zuobai held out his hand to Alice and the doctor said they were returning to base. The low hiss of a radio could be heard in the grass. The radio was static, but a second later someone's voice was heard asking the rescue team to rescue him. Zuobai fled the base with Alice, and after being out of the base for only a short time, she fell to the ground with severe chest pains. After that, they were returned to the laboratory for treatment. The chest pain mentioned in the records, is it because they went out of base? He opened his eyes and saw Alice in a nearby capsule. He apologized to her and noticed Bandu outside, who was looking at him. In a few days, his body recovered miraculously quickly. He asked the doctor if Bandu also left the base. The doctor covered him with a blanket and said that he was very quick-witted. Bandu stole the electronic key, but he was afraid that it would be dangerous there, so he went out alone, and if it were safe there, he would come back for Alice. At that moment, he was in the final stages of his research and thus was unable to stop Bandu in time. He had been there for over an hour when he found it. All his efforts to save him were unsuccessful. Zuobai asked if Alice could be saved. The doctor replied that she would be passed out for a while, but she would be fine. He sat on a chair and said that he was special. The awakening of spiritual power increases resistance. Zuobai looked down and asked, Why did he let them escape? With his strength, he could stop them. The doctor replied that he had spiritual power, and he must understand something. 
He constantly wants to run away, which is why he gave him the opportunity to do so so that he would learn a lesson. The cat told Zuobai that he was a good person. If he hadn't saved him, he would probably have died. Zuobai exclaimed, How dare she say that? What is actually going on here? She replied that she had lost her memory, but she only remembered that she had to give him something about the survivor's system. Zuobai asked if she lost her memory. Didn't she tell him that she would tell everything when he got her out of there? She replied that she had lied to him, otherwise who would have saved her then? He got mad and called her an idiotic cat. He told the doctor that he did not understand one more thing. If he wanted to let him out of the base, why did he strangle him in the ventilation? The doctor was surprised. In ventilation? It wasn't him, since he had been in the lab all night. Zuobai wondered, then who was it? He remembered that when he was in the capsule, he saw the second Bandu carry away the crippled Bandu. There are two Bandu. He asked if Bandu hadn't run outside and been too infected to save himself. Why are there two Bandu on the base? One in the lab on the verge of death, and the other unharmed in the classroom with them. The doctor looked at him and after a short pause replied that he did not need to know about this yet. Night has come. Zuobai lay in bed wondering who was the guy who was choking him. He began to toss and turn and wondered why the doctor didn't talk about the two Bandu. Is this another world or is it really the end of the world? He clutched his head, too many questions swirling in his head, for which there were no answers yet. At the same time, a black snake was flying over the base outside. A second later it disappeared, and a strong wind rose. After recovering, Zuobai returned to his former life. He ate, exercised, and went to classes. The most amazing thing is that the doctor did not take away the stone and did not say anything about the cat. But why? He put that thought aside and thought that now he needs to cultivate spiritual energy. He doesn't know what the future holds for him, but he better have more options to protect himself. There was a huge padlock on his system and he asked the cat why this system didn't work. Her name is Christiana. She is the cutest and most important cat in the world. Zuobai told her to stop pretending. Didn't she say that with the stone you can activate the system? She asked why he is so angry. Does the system need this stone? Zuobai angrily replied that she was lying again. Did she steal that stone? She replied that this is nonsense. This is her stone. He asked her to tell me what the stone was for, and she replied that she had amnesia and therefore she did not remember it. Zuobai said she didn't know anything at all. Why does he need such a useless cat? She angrily said that he again did not respect her. Now she won't tell him how to start the system. Zuobai folded his hands in prayer and affectionately asked her to teach him how to run the system. She replied that it was better. He has it in his subconscious, so let him release it. She started coming out of his forehead and said with a laugh that she was leaving. Zuobai detained her and didn't let her get out. He said that he could control her as he wanted. She released her claws and said that he needed to think what he was doing. He smiled and asked, Pet her. She replied that she didn't need it. He smiled and asked her to sort out the system. She hit him on the back of the head and he asked why she hit him. After that he noticed that the system was unlocked and points of laziness appeared. Christiana said that the instructions for use say that if something goes wrong, he will get hit on the head. He rubbed the back of his head and asked what kind of stupid system was this. She changed into a teacher's outfit and said that now it was time to teach him some techniques. Spiritual power is the power developed by practice after he exhales his spiritual energy and merges with heaven and earth. This is the basis of everything. In order to discover something new, you need to bring cultivation to a certain level. It is a cultivation method similar to a martial arts manual that determines his future skills. It all depends on his level of merging with heaven and earth. The higher his level in this, the stronger his spiritual power. She asked if he wants to become her student and train with her. She laughed and said that then she could take everything from him. Suddenly she felt something and evaporated, leaving only the teacher's costume. Zuobai pulled the cat back into his head and said that he was a fool. Why couldn't he think that just lying down could make him stronger? Christiana said with displeasure that this guy pisses her off so much. Zuobai covered himself with a blanket and thought that like this, he gains a little bit of laziness per second. So by tomorrow morning he will become very strong. He will become... He woke up and asked why he only had 200 points. He lay all night. She said the system had a limit. He can get stronger after a good night's sleep. What is he complaining about? Zuobai said he thinks he has lost weight. But it doesn't matter. 
First he needs to upgrade his spiritual power in order to surpass Dr. Zhuang. Zhuobai increased spiritual power by one by spending ten sloth points. He asked, Doesn't one point of laziness add one level of spiritual power? Why this time ten? Christiana replied that the ratio has changed. Previously, for one point of laziness, you could get one point of spiritual power. Now ten points of laziness are removed for one point of spiritual power. He was lucky. It would take an ordinary person a very long time to strengthen the spiritual energy. Zuo Bai began to increase his spiritual strength, and when he raised it to twenty units, Christiana asked him to calm down. After that his head began to spin, and blood began to flow from his nose. She told him that he didn't need to pump spiritual power right away, because his body needed to adapt. Did he forget that when was the last time he added ten points of spiritual power at a time and made himself faint? Zuo Bai wiped away the blood and said that he thought he should add other skills as well, such as a divine card. She said that he must not do this in any case. If he doesn't have a strong core of spirit power, he will be consumed by his own power and become an insane monster. For a divine picture, he needs a high level of spiritual power. Zuo Bai thought, how powerful is this technique? Over time, Zuo Bai increased his spiritual strength to 30 units. Now he has become much stronger. However, as his spiritual power grew, he began to hear whispers. He was sitting in the classroom, and the statues of demons were whispering something to him. He heard it, and Christiana told him not to look at these statues under any circumstances. They devour his sensitive organs. But Zuo Bai was already absorbed in the whispering of the statues and lost consciousness. And after that, he only heard his name and requests to wake up. He passed out in class, and Dr. Zhuang sent him back to his room. He woke up and asked what time it was. Christiana was silent, and suddenly someone knocked on the door. Zuo Bai walked up to the door and thought, who could it be? He opened the door and saw Bandu in front of him. Bandu looked down at him, and Zuo Bai thought he was so suspicious. What did he want from him? He forced a smile and asked what happened. Bandu replied that the doctor had sent him to check whether he was alive or not. Zuo Bai got angry and thought he was a jerk. Christiana called to him and asked him not to be so impulsive. He had just regained his strength. Bandu wanted to leave, but turned around and said that the whole story with the escape from the base, because of which Alice almost died, if this happens again, then he will not live. He left, and Zuobai looked after him, thinking that he was being rude to him, but that's with Alice. A few days later, Zuobai was sitting in the classroom, and suddenly someone called out to him. He turned his head and saw Alice. Behind her stood the doctor, who told the rest of the children to sit down. She smiled at Zuobai and said that she had heard that he had fainted a few days ago. She asked, Is he okay? He replied that everything was fine with him and asked if she was feeling better. Bandu said she had some more. She interrupted him and said not to worry, she felt much better. Bandu sat at the table and watched Alice. After school, they went to their secret hideout. He asked what happened to her hair. She replied that the doctor said that there were many infections left on the ends of the hair that could not be neutralized, so they had to be cut off. Zuo Bai looked away and said that it was his fault that she almost died because of him. She said it was all right, she was the one who went with him. It's true no matter how it sounds. But nevertheless, they know the truth. She smiled and said it was better than holding on to empty hopes. He looked at her face, softly said her name. The smile faded from her face, and she said that when she sees Bandu, she remembers Bandu in the lab. She doesn't know what to do with it. Zuobai remembered talking to Bandu and said he thought it was her Bandu. Suddenly there was noise from the radio. The voice repeated several times that they were heavenly saviors and asked the people inside if they were okay. They are outside. Zuobai and Alice were surprised and rushed to the radio. They asked to open the gate, and Zuobai thought, if they are here, then there is hope. They were glad that the rescuers were here and ran down the corridor. He said he didn't know a rescue team even existed. Alice smiled at him and said they were saved. They continued to run down the corridor, but suddenly there was a powerful explosion that threw them into the distance. Zuobai looked up and saw a huge hole from which he could see the sky. Using loudspeakers, Dr. Zhuang told everyone to quickly go to the lab. They can't walk around the base if they want to live. He repeats, everyone needs to go to the lab. Zuo Bai listened to the announcement and said it was Dr. Zhuang's voice. The doctor said they were attacked by demons. The end has come. Zuo Bai and Alice were horrified. 
Demons? Isn't that a rescue team? All the kids went down to the lab and Bandu told them not to panic. He opened the door and said they would be safe in the lab. The girl tugged at his clothes and said she was scared. He patted her head and told her not to be afraid. The doctor would come to them when he was done with his problems. He told the rest of the kids to go inside and Alice looked at him in surprise. She told the children to stop and after a short pause said that only Dr. Zhuang could open the entrance to the lab. She looked fearfully at Bandu and asked why he could open it too. Zhuobai said that something is wrong with him. He is not a real Bandu. Bandu used spiritual power and said he was the only one who cares. He grabbed his neck and Zhuobai thought he wielded spiritual power. So he's the guy who choked him in the vent. He attacked Bandu and he thought he was so strong. Zhuobai asked why there are two of them. Bandu replied that he would not tell him anything here if he wanted to know the truth. Then he had to go with him. They entered the lab and Bandu said he was a clone of Bandu. Zuobai thought clone? Bandu said that the Bandu that was in the capsule was the real one. After he escaped from the base, Dr. Zhuang brought him back to the lab, and then he cut out the intact organs to create a clone. He opened the door and said that he restored the memory, and he turned out. They looked into the freezer, and Bandu said he wasn't the only one. Zuobai saw the frozen bodies, and Bandu said that everyone in the base was a clone. They are like guinea pigs. The doctor used them for secret spiritual power experiments. Did he make a clone of him? The doctor cloned him. He was still conscious. He saw himself being cloned with his own eyes, but he knew the memory was from the previous Bandu. He begged the doctor not to erase these memories on the condition that he become his assistant. But his copy is still him. After becoming Dr. Zhuang's assistant, he gained access to the lab door. His job is to help Dr. Zhuang research ways to fight the apocalypse using statues made from distorted, fallen, heavenly demons to make people unconsciously start practicing. But a little carelessness can lead to mutations. The only way to continue the experiment is to cut off the undamaged part and grow a new clone. The rest of the organs and tissues are stored here. He can't look at Alice anymore after what he did. Zuobai asked, Why not run away from here? Bandu asked to run away. Does he mean lifeguards? He said it was a myth. Suddenly there was a loud sound and the freezer began to shake. Bandu shouted that the sound of the explosion was very close. Maybe it's a heavenly demon descending. They called out to Alice and ran up to her. Zuobai asked what happened. She replied that the door to the laboratory had been destroyed. Bandu looked at the entrance to the laboratory and saw Dr. Zhuang there. The doctor is strong, so he must have been a demon vanquisher. The doctor laughed and said that the rescue team was here. The little girl went to the doctor and shouted that the doctor was here to save them. Zobai tried to stop her and shouted that it was not a doctor. But he did not have time. Blood was shed, and the toy bear lost his head. Fake Dr. Zhuang's body exploded, and at the same time threw sharp blades at the children. One blade was heading straight for Alice, and Zobai and Bandu wanted to save her with spiritual power. At the last moment, Alice saw only a sharp blade, which immediately pierced her head. Tears appeared in Zuobai's eyes, and Bandu only screamed. The demon broke the doctor's glasses and turned into his true form as a bloodthirsty snake. The serpent said that he couldn't believe that there were children with little spiritual power here. They don't have to bother me. Zuobai got scared and said it was something. Christiana told him to run. This is a demon that cannot be defeated. Bandu charged forward with tears in his eyes. He remembered how he approached the crying Alice and asked what her name was. She gave her name and said she was so hungry. His memories are those of the very first Bandu. Bandu handed her food and told her not to cry. It's for her. He is an adult. He will go and find food for everyone. No one will have to go hungry again. Alice wiped away her tears and asked if it was true. What happened to Bandu? He must protect everyone. With these thoughts he died. The serpent hissed and said he was too weak. He looked at Zobai's face and said that the face of a man in despair is so funny. Zobai realized that this heavenly demon pretended to be rescuers and destroyed everyone. The snake asked, Is something wrong? Christiana told Zobai to run. He was sitting on the floor holding Alice and looking at the demon. The snake threw him a radio transmitter and said that he called the rescue team. It turned out that the transmitter that Zobai placed outside was giving away the location of the base. He brought the demon here. What did he do? The snake said it was so sad that he wanted to kill him. He fired sharp blades at him and told him to die.
Suddenly, Zuobai felt something. He ran his fingers along his neck and felt that there was a deep cut, and a second later, blood spurted out. Number of survivors at the base. Zero out of forty-three people. Will he die? Christiana used the gem and turned back time. All events before his death began to happen in reverse, and he returned at the moment of entering the laboratory. Alice said that only Dr. Zhuang could open the entrance. She asked why he could open it too. Zuobai thought, wasn't it five minutes ago? Did the stone turn back time? Christiana said that maybe they foresaw the future. This stone is very important. She looked at her gem and noticed that her gem had cracked. Zuobai said that he would think about it later, now everyone should be saved. He told Alice, don't be afraid, this Bandu. It's just a little hard for him. She asked, is this Bandu? Zuobai told him that he needed his help, so let him trust him. He channeled spiritual power into the children, and they fell unconscious. Bandu turned around in surprise, and Alice asked why he knocked them out. Zuobai held his hands up to her and told her not to worry. She passed out, and he said he would explain to her later if he was alive in five minutes. He turned to Bandu and asked them to put them in the freezer where the bodies are. He needs some time. Bandu asked how he knew about the freezer. Zuobai suggested hiding them first. After a while, they moved them to the freezer, and Christiana asked if that would freeze them to death. Zuobai told her not to worry. He asked Bandu to set up the air conditioner in a special way. Snakes have infrared vision. By hiding people in the freezer, he hopes to deceive the heavenly demon. Alice said that this is an unusual demon, not so easy to deceive. After a while, Zuobai told Bandu what had happened. Bandu said, So that's what happened, it's terrible. He asked irritably, did he rush him so deliberately to lie down to rest? Zuobai replied that there was nothing he could do. He thought that it would take him three minutes and twenty seconds to accumulate two hundred laziness points. He hopes he can accumulate it before the demon arrives. There was an explosion, and Bandu asked if it was him. Zuobai confirmed his words, and the fake Dr. Zhuang looked at them in confusion. Zuobai accumulated two hundred points and said he needs to act now. They grabbed the green liquid capsules with spiritual power and threw them at the demon. The capsules shattered and the demon turned into its true form. The doctor's glasses fell and broke. Blood flowed from the snake's mouth and the whole body was in fragments. The demon hissed and looked at the two guys. Zuobai smirked, and Bandu said that the pollution neutralizing liquid really works against the heavenly demon. Zuobai began to increase spiritual strength, and Christiana asked if he wanted to level up twenty levels at once. Blood flowed from his nose, and Christiana asked him to calm down. Zuobai directed spiritual power at the snake and said he didn't care about the recoil. He called out to Bandu and told him to turn it on. Bandu turned on the apparatus, and the pipe began to suck the snake into the pipe, which led directly into the capsule. The snake was locked in a capsule and was now swimming in a green liquid. Zuobai caught his breath and told Bandu that it was a great job. Bandu said it was amazing. He clenched his hand into a fist and said it worked. Suddenly, Zuobai became ill and Bandu picked him up and asked if he was okay. He replied that everything is fine. He just used a lot of strength that strains his body. Bandu said he was wrong about it before. He was afraid that he would hurt Alice and everyone else. He looked down and guiltily said that what was in the ventilation. Zuobai put his hand on his shoulder and said he didn't have to say anything. He understood. He offered to take care of them together. He held out his hand to him and told him to stop carrying everything on himself. Tears came to Bandu's eyes and he said that he sees. He understands everything. He will teach him how to use spiritual power. They clapped each other's hands, and Bandu called him the new kid and told him not to be overconfident. Zuobai said that in theory the snakes would not get out, but the serpent found a way out and climbed out through a hole in the floor. Zuobai offered to get up and said that they should see if the doctor was alive or not. Bandu agreed, and the snake's tail climbed out of the hole. Blood was shed, and Zuobai noticed something was wrong. He turned around and saw that the snake had pierced Bandu's body. He called out to him worriedly, and after that Bandu fell to the floor. The snake attacked Zuobai, and several sharp blades pierced his body. Zuobai hit the table, and the snake said that they were able to grab him. It's even amazing. Horror appeared on Zuobai's face. The snake wrapped around him and said that it couldn't be that it was all the people at the base. Where did he hide the others? The snake noticed the entrance to the freezer and opened the door with the help of Bandu's dead body. Zuobai looked at this in horror, after which the snake threw him and rushed into the freezer. He laughed and said that there are people here. The serpent saw that they were frozen bodies and became disillusioned, 
Zuobai thought they hid them well. He hopes he doesn't find them. He hopes he The snake looked at him and thought he was so quiet. Does he pray? He saw so many people praying, but it didn't help them. The kite noticed that there was something wrong with the camera and told Zuobai that he was very cunning. The snake went to the cell and started killing the children. They started screaming and begging him to leave, but he kept killing them. Zuobai stared in horror at the freezer and noticed that Alice fell down next to him and called out to him, but the snake immediately grabbed her, and Zuobai called out to her in concern. At the same moment, the snake tore Alice to pieces and she died. Zuobai looked into the freezer and asked why he did it. He gathered his spiritual power into a fist and asked why he killed them. The snake threw a sharp blade at him and replied that they only do what they eat and shit. They must all be destroyed. Zuobai noticed this, but did not have time to dodge and closed his eyes. But when nothing happened, he opened his eyes and saw that the doctor had grabbed the blade and saved him. Zuobai quietly called out to the injured doctor, Zhuang. The doctor looked at the kite and his eyes lit up. The snake said he couldn't believe he was still alive. He's so badly hurt that he can't even use his power. It was stupid to come here. The doctor called out to Zuobai and told him to continue living. His appearance began to change, and he shouted that this was his last lesson. The doctor began to turn into a lion, and Christiana asked in surprise, Did the doctor's body change? Zuobai looked at him, and the doctor said that no matter how scary and hopeless it was, he must survive. He rushed to the attack and shouted that he must survive for the sake of all mankind. The doctor beat off the blades of the serpent and hit the demon with a burning fist. While he was punching, he shouted to Zuobai that even if the planet is no longer habitable for humans, the serpent grabbed him and told him to teach him the despair of death, because now he will die. The snake continued to squeeze the doctor's body, and he said that people never despair. His body sparkled and the serpent exclaimed, He's using self-destruct. The kite understood to run away, and Dr. Zhuang channeled Zuobai's soul power and then smiled and said goodbye to him. As the last of the human race, he must live. It must not be allowed to end the human race here and now. Hum After these words, his body was destroyed, and a powerful explosion was heard. As a result of the explosion, the base was wiped off the face of the earth, and the demon and the doctor disappeared. Zuobai is the only survivor. Dr. Zhuang used his spiritual power to protect him. He hit the ground with his fist and screamed at the top of his lungs. A notebook flew up to him, and Christiana asked if it was a diary. Zuobai took the diary in his hands and asked if it was for him. He wiped away his tears and opened the diary with trembling hands. The first page said he didn't know where the hell they were going. God help and bless. Zuobai said that the handwriting is the same as on the pages collected by Alice. It appears that they are the remains of a diary written by Dr. Zhuang. On the second page, it says that it's all wrong. They conspired and did everything wrong. He immediately realized that he could not live. Zuobai said that it looks like Dr. Zhuang was working with another group of people at that base on ways to deal with the spiritual infestation, but they failed, and only Dr. Zhuang survived. The doctor had to travel across the continent in search of survivors in order to use them as test subjects to continue his experiments. He turned the page and read what was written there. Today he found 43 lucky ones. His name is Zuobai, he has a lot of potential, and he made him look at Bandu. They are all that is left of humanity. They must definitely survive. Zuobai's hands trembled and a drop of tears fell on the page. He remembered the faces of those who were at the base and realized that only he remained in this world. He looked up at the sky and apologized to everyone. What should he do next? How to resist this cruel world? The wind turned the pages of the diary, and Christiana said that it seemed that something was written on the back. There was an inscription on the page that secrets were kept here, and coordinates were written under the inscription. Suddenly Zuobai saw a bright beam of light above. Something flew in the sky and Zuobai thought, Here comes a heavenly demon. He can't leave the diary, he can't take that risk. He destroyed the diary, he needs to remember the coordinates. He repeated the coordinates several times in his head and the wind picked up. Head and the he was completely exhausted and lay down on the ground. He thought he was so tired, would he really die here? A bright light illuminated him, and someone said that this is a tragedy. A man called the captain and said that there is a survivor. Zuobai opened his eyes, and the man asked if he was alive. Zuobai thought they were people. His vision cleared, and he saw that on the man's uniform it was written that he was from the Heavenly Rescue Squad. The man said he had a hard time. Zuobai thought it was a rescue squad? 
The man shouted that he needed a suit, otherwise he would die. Another man from the squad shouted that protective clothing was needed. Zuobai felt his heart hurt. How long was he outside? Christiana called out to him and he passed out. After a while he woke up and felt a heaviness in his chest. Something dripped onto his face and he opened his eyes. He saw a dog in front of him and was very surprised. The man asked if he was awake. He did not know that in their time there were people who were born naturally. His name is Zhang Aidao. He may just call him Zhang. Zuobai thought this guy who saved his life looks good. Christiana said that this is a good person. Zuobai asked him, where are they? He replied that this is the forward base of the Heavenly Rescue Team. He has been in a coma for a week. He asked if his name is Zuobai. Zuobai asked how he knows. The dog barked and said his name. Zuobai wondered if this was a talking dog. Zhang said that his companion told him this. She is an old person. She could not resist the infection. They did everything to cure her, but it still did not stop her from turning into an ordinary dog. Only one in ten people survives after a mutation. This girl is very lucky. Zuobai asked if he meant this dog as Aisha. Only two of them survived. Zhang said they were on a mission nearby and saw the explosion. He asked what happened to them. Zuobai replied that they had met a heavenly demon. Their master saved everyone by detonating his spiritual power and died along with the demon. Zhang sighed and said that he admires their teacher. But to be honest, heavenly demons are impossible to kill. No matter how many times the heavenly demon dies, they will still be respawned in the heavenly demonic pool. As long as the heavenly demon queen is alive, they won't be able to kill them once and for all. The war between people and heavenly demons has been going on for many centuries. Under the leadership of the Order of the Heavenly Judgment, humanity fights and retreats, occupying the last third of the eastern continent. To protect against demons and spiritual infection, there are several fortresses. Ninety percent of the Celestials are concentrated in five main cities, in the southeast, northwest, and in the center. The best vehicle casters and combat warriors are gathered in the cities. These five cities are their last hope. Zuobai thought that the heavenly court seemed to be a powerful authority. How could Dr. Zhuang not know of their existence? Why did the doctor call him the last of the human race? He asked, what is the difference between an old man and a heavenly man? Zhang replied that celestials, or heavenly people, are blessed with a magical seal after birth. They are much more attuned to the world than naturally born old people. As for the rest, he does not know, as he is only a soldier. Zuobai said, so that's why they can go outside without protective clothing. Zhang said he was, but they gave him the vaccine while he was unconscious. Zuobai asked the vaccine. Christiana said she followed him when he was in a coma. This is a protective rune that should keep him from infection in the outside world. Zhang told him to remember that the vaccine is not immune. He can last a maximum of seven days, and then he must return to the safe zone to rest and allow the vaccine to recuperate. Zuobai said that he understood him. After that, Zhang said that his work was finished and said goodbye to him. Zuobai thanked him and he left. He checked his laziness points and said that he was lying down for a week and he only has 200 points. It looks like coma doesn't count. He boosted his spiritual strength and said that this time he is a little dizzy. Why is that? Christiana replied that since he was stronger, the side effects of the promotion would now be less. Zuobai said that he would pump more then. He raised his spiritual strength and grabbed a nearby chair. After that, he clenched his hand into a fist and squeezed the chair. He threw a piece of iron on the floor and realized that he had become stronger. He swung his legs off the bed and hugged Aisha. He told her not to worry. He would kill the heavenly demon queen and destroy the pool. He will avenge everyone. He will avenge... Early the next morning, he was called to the hostel. Zuobai asked the school of Taoism. Zhang said that 100 years ago, the heavenly court brought together the four most powerful sects of that time. Four schools of Taoism were established in four cities in the north, south, east, and west to exchange cultivation methods and resources. With his current fighting ability, he is not fit to fight demons, so he should go to a Taoist school and study first. Christiana said that there she could trick Zuobai into taking over him and the system. Zuobai thought, why does he get the feeling that they want to set him up? Zhang said the nearest school is Donghua School, where the entrance test is held every other week. It just so happens that today the runner showed up here, so today he is leaving. Zuobai grabbed his hand and asked him to wait. He asked what he entrance test. Did he pass the test? Actually, Zhang didn't pass the test, and he told him he didn't remember. 
Zuobai looked at him with a pleading look and asked if there was anything he could do to help. Can you do some cleaning? Zhang sighed heavily and told him to go inside. He will tell you everything in detail. As one of the four great schools of Taoism, this school only accepts cultivation geniuses. It must be a person who can carry the flag in future wars, so there are two mandatory entry requirements. Under twenty years of age and the level of spiritual power above thirty, Zuobai began to wash things and asked, What level of spiritual power is the thirtieth? What is the general level of candidates? Zhang replied that the heavenly court divided the power of cultivators into eleven levels. Zero realm, from zero to nine percent. The first kingdom from ten to nineteen percent. The second kingdom from twenty to twenty-nine percent. Third kingdom from thirty to thirty-nine percent. The fourth kingdom from forty to forty-nine percent. Fifth kingdom from fifty to fifty-nine percent. The sixth kingdom from sixty to sixty-nine percent. Seventh kingdom from seventy to seventy-nine percent. Eighth kingdom with eighty-nine percent. Ninth kingdom from ninety to ninety-nine percent. Tenth kingdom, one hundred percent. When he took the test, the maximum cultivation rate was ninety-nine percent, and there were about twenty thousand people with a cultivation rate of thirty, sixty percent. There were still about ten people with a degree of ninety-nine percent. Zuobai got upset and said that there are so many people with ninety-nine percent strength. He only has seventy. Only, Zhang said that the next test. Is willpower. He spent seven hours in a horse stance. After that, it seemed to him that he had no legs. Then there will be a learning ability test. In a Taoist school, they were shown an ancient, mysterious Taoist scripture. Then they wrote a text based on it. Only someone who is very deep in Taoism could write the lyrics. So he failed on the last test. Zuobai said that he asked him for nothing and washed his underpants in vain. Christiana giggled, and Zhang said that he couldn't let him work for nothing, so he would give him something. Zuo Bai changed clothes, and Zhang said that these were his clothes when he was young. He examined it and said that it suits him very well. After talking, they left the building, and Zhang said that he would go on this flying ship to Donghua City. Zuo Bai was surprised. What kind of technology is this? Is this Maglev ship? He came closer and noticed that each bronze horse had a rune on it. He thought, "Is it because of the runes?" Zhang wrote something in a notebook and said that when he arrives in the city. Then let him go to this address. A very good friend lives there. She handed him the blade and told him to pass it on from him. Zuo Bai and Aisha boarded the ship, and he thanked Zhang. He said that he would definitely fulfill his request. Zhang wished him good luck, and Zuo Bai thanked him. Zhang looked after the departing ship and said that they would meet again. The ship flew over the burning city, and Zuo Bai asked why there were no passengers. Everyone at war. Christiana was licking herself, and he said she needed to see the world. Aisha started licking her, and he asked Christiana to look after her. They looked out the window, and he said that this thing seems to run faster than a bullet train. It's hard for him to tell if the technology in this world is advanced or backward. Suddenly, a little fairy appeared in front of them and greeted them in Donghua City. Aisha barked, and they saw a big city in front of them. Fairy said that the population of Donghua City is three hundred million people. The military zone is located 500 meters above ground level. At 1,000 meters is the administrative area, and at 1,500 meters is the school of Taoism. Now they have entered the protective barrier of Donghua City, which protects against demons and purifies the spirit. The flying ship flew a few meters and began to stop. The ferry asked them not to forget their things, and they left the ship. Zuo Bai found himself in the city and thought that in fact. The city is much less magnificent than it seems from afar. When he is in the city, he realizes that most of the streets are in shadow and darkness all day long. He looked at the leaflet with the address and asked a passerby for directions. People here are always in a hurry, and the streets are very clean. There is no greenery and landscape design in the city. Everything is so cold and precise, as if some kind of machine. He said that now he understood that society had changed because of the war. He reached his destination and said that it seems to be here. He rang the doorbell and the old man opened the door for him, asking who he was. Zuo Bai replied that Zhang Aidao asked him to come to him. He said that he can stay here for a few days. He wants to take the entrance test to the Dao School. The old man asked, "Does he remember that he is his father?" Zuo Bai understood. So this is Zhang's father. Do they have a bad relationship? The old man smoothed his beard and asked Zuo Bai, "Is he the son of Aidao?" Zuo Bai was surprised, and the old man said that now he looks the same as he did in his youth. Zuo Bai said that is not true. 
The old man invited him into the house, and Zuobai saw a family photo on the cabinet. He asked if he lives here alone. The old man sat down on an armchair and answered that his wife had divorced him. He was a soldier all his life and realized that life is not so simple. You can lose everything. He reached for a blanket, and Zuobai said he would get it for him. Suddenly the old man grabbed him by the shoulders and called him by his son's name. Zuobai got scared, and the old man asked if he hated him. Tears welled up in his eyes. He asked if he hated him for forcing him to join the army after he dropped out of Dao school. Does he hate him for forcing him into a dangerous path? Zuobai asked if he thinks he is his son because of these clothes. Christiana said this is Alzheimer's, right? It is easy to go mad in old age if you fight for a long time on the front lines in your youth. Zuobai suddenly remembered something and reached into his pocket. And reached. He drew a wooden dagger and smiled. He put the dagger in the old man's hands and said that he didn't hate him. He just didn't know what to say. Grandpa remembered how his son asked why he wants to be a soldier. He doesn't want him to leave. He replied that he had to leave, otherwise who would protect them? Then Idao told his father that he would join the army when he grew up to protect his father and mother. Grandpa pressed a wooden dagger to his chest, and Zuobai hugged him. Before Zuobai had time to look back, the day of the exam arrived. Zuobai woke up and thought, What smells so delicious? Grandpa called him by his son's name and said that today he was going to the exam, so Dad made him noodles with two eggs. He handed him a plate and Zobai said it looked very appetizing. He began to eat noodles with great appetite, after which he thanked his grandfather and called him father. Grandpa was surprised and tears came to his eyes. Aisha and Grandpa saw him off, and he shouted to Zobai that he could do anything. Zobai raised his fist and left. A huge crowd gathered outside the Tao school, through which Zobai tried to get through. He looked at the papers and thought that they had just measured his age. Now it would be a spiritual strength test. The girl stepped under the strength meter and found out that her spiritual strength was only 29. Zuobai thought, this thing measures spiritual strength. She was unlucky. She was so close to the passing requirement of 30 units. The girl began to beg for another chance. Yesterday she didn't sleep well. She was too nervous, so she asks to give her another chance. The teacher replied that she tested her three times, and she failed the test, so let her come next year. The girl replied that she couldn't. This year she turns twenty. Next year she will be older. The teacher hit her and told her not to interfere. She called the next one and the crowd murmured, that since she is close, she will still be eliminated in the next stage. What is the point of taking the exam with such strength? Let her join a small clan and just get on with her life. Does she think she can become an elite? It just takes everyone's time. Zuobai thought she was being so strict with her. The next person came forward, and the strength meter measured his spiritual strength at 80 units. Strength. People immediately began to whisper, someone envied him, and someone was afraid that now he would not get into school. Zuobai smiled and thought, is that all? He will definitely be the center of attention. This week he didn't mess around, he practiced. In addition to lying down, he developed several other ways to earn sloth points. He shifted the work to others and received points for it. Christiana washed the dishes and said that if not for the system, she would have killed him. She scrubbed the floors furiously and said she wouldn't do it. If you entrust someone with your work, it gives points of laziness because the cat helped him. He not only was able to fully pump spiritual power, but also accumulated 1,000 points of laziness. He smirked and thought they would all bow to him. Suddenly the crowd screamed that this thing was broken. 105 spiritual strength? The strength meter measured the guy's strength at 105 units, and the crowd was amazed. Zuobai thought, who is this guy? Is it possible to achieve such strength at his age? He overheard a conversation from the crowd. Is he a genius who has already cultivated and passed the 0% Tao degree before entering school? They haven't heard of him? He's from the royal family. The girl said that the next Zuobai and he began to climb the stairs. At this time, the guy was going downstairs and they made eye contact, but the guy broke eye contact first and Zuobai watched him go. The meter measured his spiritual strength at 99, but all eyes were on that guy. Christiana said that his moment has come, but no one pays attention to him. Zuobai exclaimed that it was none of her business. After some time, the old man said that a total of 12,000 students took the first round of tests this year. God did not bless their people. The number of children with the gift of cultivation again became smaller. This old man's name is Zhao Shuyi. He is the vice principal of the Dao school. 
The teacher said that there is still an elite, 25 candidates with a total of up to 99, and one of them has already entered the path, having 105 units, extraordinary talent. He will surely be one of the first on the list. Her name is Sun Yu Zhen, and she is a Tao teacher. The deputy director asked if it was an orphan from the Zuo family. Is this Zuo Dao? At this time, Zuo Bai gazed at him and said his name in his mind. Suddenly, a girl called out to him and asked if his name was Zuo Bai, right? She greeted him and said her name was Jing Xu. He asked if they knew each other. She replied that they all passed the first stage. They have a spiritual power of about 99. The elite with 99 spiritual power will definitely pass the first two stages. So they are classmates now. They joined hands and greeted each other. She said that she knows almost all the 99 spiritual power candidates in Donghua City. Why didn't she see him? He replied that he lived in the wild for a long time. Only recently he was rescued and brought to Donghua City. She wondered how he survived in nature. He must be a strong-spirited man. She fears that none of them are better than him, except for that freak, Zuo Dao. Zuo Bai scratched the back of his head and said he was just lucky. Suddenly a man appeared in the air and said that the second stage of the test would begin soon. He is the examiner of the second stage of the test. His name is Lu Chongyang. They are all those who want to become great cultivators. They better understand spiritual power. To avoid madness and distortion, they need to go further along the path of seeking the Tao. They need strong willpower and self-discipline. Now they are on a 10 kilometers circular path created especially for them by the Tao school. This is a heavenly road. The content of the second stage of testing, running. Bracelets appeared in the sky, and he said that this bracelet would show their speed. Every two seconds it will eliminate the slowest member until 1,200 people remain. He pointed to the bracelet with his finger and said that if the bracelet turns red, then they are out of the test. Zuobai looked at the bracelet on his hand and said that he put on 12,000 bracelets so accurately with spiritual power. Such control is terrifying. Jing Xu said that this teacher belongs to the elite classes. If they are among the best, then he will teach them. Zuo Bai enthusiastically said it was amazing. One of the examinees said that it was strict, but it was just a run. It would be easy for them. Zuo Bai thought that the rules for conducting the test might seem simple. But in fact, simple calculations show that out of 12,000 people, one person is eliminated every two seconds. According to his calculations, it turns out that they will need to run for six hours, and they need to run fast. The examiner said the test is about to begin. Everyone immediately jumped up and ran. Zuo Bai ran diligently, but eventually began to fall behind. He began to breathe heavily, and the examiner asked what happened. They just started running. Every step on this path leads to the knowledge of spirituality, so it tires not only the body, but also the spirit. It is ten times more difficult than ordinary running. Zuo Bai and the other members barely ran and said it was no wonder. Zuo Dao and Jing Xu easily ran ahead, and Zuo Bai thought that this guy is strong, but he can't do that. The examiner said it's been five minutes. They start weeding out everyone who can't run. Zuo Bai was running and the members were dropping out behind him. Suddenly he saw a red light from the side and thought, he was expelled? But the red light was coming from the bracelet of the guy who was running too close to him. The examiner said that Wang Wu was expelled. Zuo Bai ran on thinking he was scared to death. Jing Xu turned around and thought, who is running there? Behind her she saw Zuo Bai and thought, how can he be so frail? Zuo Bai remembered the past and thought he couldn't be excluded. He can't afford to be expelled. He doesn't know why it's him, but he has a system, so maybe he's the best hope for saving humanity in this cruel world. Therefore, he cannot lose. He gathered all his strength and ran forward. He looked at the back of Zuo Dao, thought he had to catch up with him. He took another step and felt something, he thought. He went beyond his limit. Why does he feel like his spiritual power has increased? Could it be that his spiritual power has broken through the limit of 99 and he is on his way to Dao power? The guy ran next to him and said that he was about to step onto the path of Dao. His spirit power is growing so fast, this feeling, he must have attained the Dao through the heavenly path. Another guy caught up with Zuobai and said they shouldn't get tired. This test is not a waste of time. Zuobai thought it was strange. His spiritual power didn't change. Suddenly the guys got sick and Zuobai asked what happened to those two. The examiner said that 100 years ago, the great monk of their Taoist school, Master Qingjing Sanren, created the three basic rules for cultivation. 
First, one should not rush to enter the path of Tao. Second, you mustn't lose your spirit. The third, you cannot succumb to temptation. Three rules that they need to follow in order to move further along the path of the Tao. Along the However, the path of cultivation is full of temptations and dangers. Only a person with a strong will and great self-discipline can do it. One who cannot endure the temptations of the way of the Tao will be expelled. Zuobai turned around and saw that the rest of the candidates had been eliminated. Sometime later, the examiner said they disappointed him. Fifteen minutes have passed and there are already about twelve hundred of them. They are the worst class of candidates in the history of the school. The test of the heavenly road is just an imitation of the real way of the Tao, which is ten times more dangerous than this test. They showed how they succumbed to temptation. Driven by greed, they can go crazy and lose their spirit, so they should be ashamed. Candidates blushed with shame and Zuobai realized, so that's what happened. The examiner said that, however, there was a candidate who did not at all succumb to the temptation to devote himself to the examination. Zuobai drank some water and thought he was lucky. Just a couple more minutes and he would have died. The examiner called his name and Zuobai spat out water in surprise. The examiner said that he had the best result in the second test. Christiana thought that if the survivor's system had not shown that it was ineffective, this fool would have lost too. The examiner offered to applaud his iron will. Candidates immediately began to whisper, Who is this? Jing Xu approached Zuo Bai and said that she thought he would go crazy like the others. She can't believe she's so stupid, she should have figured out the true purpose of the test from the start. She clapped her hands, and he told her not to talk about it. After that, he asked her in a whisper to help him up and she was surprised. At this time, Zuo Dao was watching him and throwing a displeased glance. All the candidates gathered in front of the stage, and Zuo Bai said that fulfilling the wish lists of these two old men is such a headache. The sun teacher asked for silence and said that the deputy would speak. The vice principal greeted the students and said that he was their examiner, Mr. Zhao Shuyi, vice principal of the Tao school. He asked, does anyone know why the first of the three laws is not to rush into the path of the Tao? One of the candidates replied that it was because it was the most dangerous. As it was the 120 years ago, the heavens were distorted and the air polluted, as a result of which the celestial spirit Tao began to release a lot of information. All this knowledge was written down by the monks. However, these texts contain a lot of distorted and bad information. Just reading this text can drive any mortal crazy. That is why the four great schools of Taoism were created, and why the founder of their school created these three rules. First, one should not rush to enter the path of Tao. Second, you can't lose your spirit. The third, you cannot succumb to temptation. Therefore, the first rule is that one should not rush into the path of the Tao. The deputy director stroked his beard and said it was right. For safety, the clans have created various secure methods for storing cultivation information. All interpretations of the heavenly path of their Taoist school for centuries were kept on this map. He unrolled a huge scroll in front of the candidates, and they were greatly surprised. Zuobai swallowed and asked, What the hell is this? It's just a blank sheet of paper. The vice principal said it was too dangerous for them to read the Sky Stealer card right away, so he cast a spell. This map is like the Sky Thieves map, which is so hard to understand. It is up to them how much they can understand it. The third test begins. The Thief of Heaven. They need to put on paper what they have understood. Now they can start. Zuobai thought, well, what should he do? Christiana said that God sees everything and sees that he is a dull stone. He will simply hand over a blank sheet of paper. Zuobai looked around and saw that everyone was already writing something. He wondered, do they understand everything so well? Christiana said that all of them study hard and practice. They can more or less understand the mystery of the scroll. Maybe he knows thirty-six ways to lie on the bed. She laughed, and Zuobai began to think hard that he couldn't copy it. Christiana said that if he wants her to teach him how to write, then just ask him. Zuobai repeated her words in his mind. Ask? Suddenly a thought came to him and he understood everything. He started to write something, and after a few seconds he jumped up from his seat and said that he had already finished. He lay down on the table and thought that if he knew that after turning in the sheet of paper he would have to be here, he would write again. He has nothing to do, which means he will accumulate points. As he will Christiana, all the people were surprised this guy wrote. Who the hell is this guy? As time passed, the sun teacher told the substitute that all work was graded. She showed him three works and said that they were the best of all. 
The deputy drew attention to one work and was very surprised. A woman was drawn on the paper, and the deputy in a rage asked who did it. This drawing belonged to a student of Qian Wang Sun. The deputy director awarded him zero points. Who even allowed him to draw on the control test? Sun Yu looked at the drawing and said that this Qian Wang Sun may be frivolous, but he is a great artist. She thinks he's a master of the hidden sword painting technique, and his first two test scores are among the best, so she thinks he might be the top one on the list. The deputy director screamed that this is absurd. Wang Sun at this time sneezes and thinks that someone remembers him. The student approached Zuo Dao and asked if he's training even now. When can he rest? He wrote everything down and seemed to understand something, but he does not know how many points he will be given. And what did he write? He wrote about the techniques of breathing exercises. The first place will belong to him. Chong Yang looked at the piece of paper and asked, Isn't this the method of purification and breathing that belongs to Zhao Shuyi? Why did he pass it on to Zuo Dao? Shuyi said that their talented students didn't even study. How can he pass it on to outsiders? Teacher Ying Hui asked me to look at this sheet. This method is very similar, but it is not the old man's method. This is a ridiculous method containing 30 to 40 percent of the effect of real cloud breathing and clearing. But if Zuo Dao can further comprehend the scroll in the future, then it will become the backbone of the Tao school. He thinks he's number one this year. He was interrupted by another teacher and asked, Who is Zuo Bai? He gave them his work and asked if they had seen it. Zuo Bai wrote that the way of Feng Chang is not as difficult as it seems. Everyone became very gloomy when they saw this, and Shui said that it was the phrase of ten thousand spirits. Sun Yu started screaming and asked the director if he wasn't going to give him the first place, was he? She is afraid that one word about a phrase is not enough to convince the public, although it is inexplicably profound. The place is better to give Zuo Dao. Shui asked the others what they think. Ying Hui said that both of these works are roughly equal in understanding the scroll, but in any case, he chooses Zuo Dao. He asked the others what they thought. Chong Yang said he was very impressed with this Zuo Bai in the second test. These two phrases, while not as specific as the breathing technique, are of practical use. He understood the scroll of the Sky Reaver much more. It may still be a rough diamond, but this Zuo Bai has the potential to be very valuable. That's why he chooses it. He asked Master Xing, what would he say? Xing looked at his work and said that he also chose Zuo Bai. Sun Yu started yelling at the director. The Zuo Dao family is a noble family. Now Zuo Dao is the only seedling in the Zuo family. If the Zuo Dao with its performance does not take first place, then they will simply be ignored. Chong Yang shouts that the beginning of the Tung school saw more Feng Chang. They must respect their elders, because if it were not for them, then nothing would have happened now. Xu Yi ordered them to stop. He has already decided everything, and they must prepare lists. Meanwhile, Zuo Bai looks at the big screen and thinks, when will the results be announced? He does not know if this phrase can deceive them, nor does he know if such a description even exists. Did he pass the third test? Suddenly began to announce the results. All the students ran up and started to see if they were on this list. In the top ten list, Zuo Bai ranked first, Zuo Dao ranked second, and Wang Sun ranked third. Jing Xu congratulated Zuo Bai on his victory. Christiana says that the system helped him in the first test. In the second test, the system helped again because it showed that the spiritual power did not change. The third test was a great idea. Where does this idiot even get his knowledge to write words of this level? Zuo Bai ran home and noticed that the door was open. He ran home and shouted to his dad that he had won first place. He saw a broken frame with a family photo on the floor near the entrance. But what happened here? Christiana jumped down and looked into the distance. They went into the room and Zuo Bai asked the old man if he was at home. In the dark, he saw Aisha with glowing green eyes and asked her, Is that her? Christiana told Zuo Bai to run away from here with horror in her eyes. He asked if the cat was afraid of the dark. She really surprised him. He leaned over to Aisha and said everything was fine. As soon as he looked at her, his eyes filled with horror. Aisha stood on the web bound with tears in her eyes. Suddenly the old man lit a match and a candle, and Zuo Bai looked in his direction. Sitting on an armchair, the old man began to call his son and put the candle on the table. Zuo Bai asked the old man, Is this him? The old man with a crazy look looked back at his son, and it turned out that an evil spirit, a spider, took possession of his body. The spider completely took over his body and pretended to be an old man. Zuo Bai asked Mr. Lao, Is everything all right? 
Suddenly, a viscous web began to bind his legs. Lao continued to call his son and congratulated him on passing the exam. Zuo Bai got very frightened and started calling for help. Suddenly, something chopped off the web and a guy appeared in front of him, who began to fight with the spider. He activated the seal on the spider, and the monster calmed down. Fortunately, he made it in time. Zuo Bai noticed that it was a policeman. The guy with the green hair asked him if he was okay or was he. After some time, the doctors examined the old man Lao. On the table near which Lao was sitting, there was a memorial photograph of Zhang Aido. The policeman said he was very sorry. Zuo Bai asked how he died. The policeman reveals that the search and rescue team encountered a heavenly demon. He sacrificed himself to cover the retreat of his comrades. The ashes jar is empty, and there is absolutely nothing left of it. Zuo Bai remembered all those moments with Zhang Aido, and his fist began to shake. The policeman says that this man was beaten, and there was nothing left of him. Then a distorted particle was born. Zuo Bai remembered what had happened and asked, didn't they say that the vaccine would stop the distortion? Police officer says the vaccine is not 100% protective. The distortion was due to a strong emotional blow. Airborne contamination has continued to increase in recent years. Zuo Bai asked if the old man could return to human form. Judging by Lao's age and cultivation, it's just not possible. In order to avoid the second stage of infection, the old man will have to be killed. It would be forced euthanasia. The doctors began to carry away the old man Lao, in whose eyes tears flowed. The apartment was sealed, and the policeman said that this woman was the old man's ex-wife. Does Zuo Bai want to come up and greet her? The woman held a small sword that belonged to Zhang Aido and wept. He looked at her and told the policeman to forget about it. The policeman told him not to blame himself, because this happens very often. Zuo Bai just thinks that tomorrow he is going to go to Tao school. He will avenge Zhang Aido. Aisha and Christiana were shocked by his words. Zuo Bai held Aisha close to him and told her not to be afraid. He would definitely find a way to cure her. The policeman looked at him and handed him a business card with the name Li Shu Ju. This is his contact details. He cannot be shy and call him if he has any difficulties. Zuo Bai thanked Officer Li, and they said goodbye. After some time, they were 1,500 meters above ground level. At night, here is the real horror, and they are terribly cold. Christiana screams that he is a fool and does not need to sleep on the street because he could easily find a place for himself. Zuobai told her to stop grumbling because he was in a bad mood. The fact that he is too lazy to argue also gives laziness points. Master Xing walked past him and said that it was shameful for a student from their school to sleep on the street. Zuobai remembered that this was one of the examiners. Xing said that he liked him very much, so he suggested that he come with him in order to place him in a room in advance. Not only was Zuo Bai the first to move into the dormitory, but he was even given a single room. While he was brushing his teeth, the rest of the students with backpacks wondered if he was here before everyone else. Why was he given a single room? They want to ask someone older why it happened. Zuo Bai is in the spotlight wherever he goes, without an opening ceremony, without inspiration and guidance. The schools in this world are like the schools in China. The first thing that happens to new students at the school before the city of Tung is that they are assigned to classes according to their grades. Students who score less than 90 go to the regular class and are taught by Sun Yu. She greeted her chicks and told them welcome to hell. Only 25 people left. Master Xing greeted the students and introduced himself. His name is Xing Jun, and he is their teacher this year. They are the best of the best, and he only teaches the best. And he... Jing Xu whispers in Zuo Bai's ear, that this teacher is a master of the fifth realm and teaches only the best students. She was told that he was the one upstairs who voted for Zuo Bai. This teacher has already exceeded 50% and reached the fifth realm. Will he choose Zuo Bai? Xing called Zuo Dao to him. The students began to talk, that now they understand that strength in this world decides everything because this is the path to success. Moreover, he comes from a famous family. They are very envious because such a handsome man is also strong. Chong Yang asked, They don't like it, do they? He will take care of them, and their goal is to exceed their spiritual power above 99. The first thing they must do to achieve this is to select a divine scroll to cultivate. The divine scrolls are a short path to cultivation that the sages concluded after corrupting the heavenly path, regardless of the shedding of numbers. Each divine scroll is a Tao fruit forged by the immortal cultivators of the heavenly court 
who have made great efforts to accumulate the knowledge of the heavenly path. This is only available to the best cultivation schools such as Tao. These nine scrolls are the foundations of the Zero Realm. Even if the scrolls are basic, any of them would be worth millions in the outside world. There are ten realms in cultivation, and each realm has its own scrolls. However, the base divine scroll will determine the further path of cultivation. Zuobai wondered, isn't that like an upgrade tree in an RPG? They can only choose one basic scroll for life, and they can't choose another one, so they have to think carefully. Chongyang will tell them about the differences between the nine scrolls. Zuobai asked Christiana what should he choose. He remembered her again when he needed help. He has no choice. He has nine troubles. These are the scrolls that he received along with the system. Holy nine troubles. Does not sound very good. Does that mean he has to choose? Christiana will help him choose. She can train too, because his divine scroll is her divine scroll. If he practices, then she practices. Unlike the others, Zuobai has another tree that you can climb. If he asks well, then Christiana can change the scroll. Zuobai jumped up and shouted that he was choosing the sword scroll. First of all, the sword is good in speed and has high attack power. Especially if he can't win, at least he can run away. Christiana almost died from these words and asked why he chose the art of the sword. Why would he? What kind of child is this? He received his scroll, which was firmly imprinted in his brain and hands, as if transferring his knowledge straight into his body. Christiana pulled out the scroll and said that if he couldn't use it, then let him give it to her. She had long wanted to become a swordswoman. They saw a very beautiful seal. Christiana started cursing because she didn't have enough spiritual power to cultivate. Let Zuobai give her a cool breathing method. He has his scrolls. He should have used the scroll back when he was low on laziness. The seal reappeared before them, which is larger than that of Christiana. Zuobai realized that this was his divine disc. Chongyang says that each level of the divine disc has many star points for each realm. First, they must infuse their spiritual power into the first star point. Zuobai sees this. He should infuse spiritual power and see what happens. An interface appeared in front of him. Warning. Strengthening the body and spirit. The star point should strengthen his body and make him more resistant to beatings. There are a lot of words here. Igniting the star point is only the first step, but it is the practice that is important, as described above. Each star point has many techniques, and if they don't master it, they may not break through in a lifetime of training. Although the practice of the Divine Scroll is based on the experience of the sages, this is not 100% correct. If they have questions, they can approach the Chongyang teacher and ask questions. If something goes wrong, the consequences will be unimaginable. Zuobai's head is about to explode with so much information, it's too complicated for him. He looked at the system, which is calculated based on laziness scores. Christiana said that others rely on their hard work, and he relies on his laziness to become stronger through it. After a while, he came into the room and finally, he can try to light the first star point. He added 300 laziness points, and another dot on the disc caught fire. His body suddenly became much more muscular and stronger. He felt very bad, but with one of his shouts he even carried Christiana off the spot. He saw eight-pack abs, and also his biceps grew. Biceps grew. Christiana says that this cultivation speed is truly demonic. She wants to steal the system from him. Zuobai looks at himself in the mirror and admires while Aisha circles around him and barks. Half an hour later, nothing had changed, and Christiana realized that it was hopeless. He drew attention to Aisha and invited her to go eat. One hug almost made her eyes pop out. He apologized to her because he hugged her too tightly, as he was not yet used to his strength. He arrived at the cafeteria of the Tao school. As an apology, he will arrange a real feast for Aisha. He saw today's menu. Payment in the dining room is also made for points. Water rock crystal, which increases the speed of the cultivation process, costs 20 points, and redfish soup, which increases resistance to fire, costs 100 points. The cheapest dish is rice, which costs only one point. Everything is very expensive here. Aisha ran to the call of food and Zuobai asked her to calm down. They only have 200 points for the month, and even if they eat one serving, it will come out at 180 points. Absolutely no one in his class can afford that. Unexpectedly, he saw Qian Wang's son carrying 30-point chicken wings, 20-point beans, 120-point meat soup, and 20-point porridge on a tray. His lunch costs as much as 190 points. He seems to be in his class. 
Zuo Bai asked what he would eat next. Air? Wang Sun introduced himself and said that points are extremely important, but strength is the most important thing. In any case, he can go to his parents and eat, and they can also make friends and help each other out. Zuo Bai sweated at such words and told Aisha to get out of here. They definitely won't become friends with this guy. Wang Sun asked him what? Let him not leave and get himself a friend. Zuo Bai ran into Zuo Dao, who told him that over the next two months, he wanted Zuo Bai to get stronger. He does not want to lose to him in the next exam, so that then he would not have any excuses. The bald guy told Zuo Bai to ignore him because he was just the way he was. If he does well in the exam, then he will have a lot of points, so he should prepare. This guy's name is John Xing and they'll see each other again. In the end, Zuo Bai took two servings of rice for two points and told Aisha to start eating. They started eating rice, and Zuo Bai was very surprised at how delicious it was. After he tried it, he was very cheered up. Now it's not the best life, but it's much better than at the base. He will need to practice. He saw Aisha pushing her plate towards him. He asked what she was doing. Maybe she wants him to eat more. He said that he had eaten and saw her drool running down her muzzle. She lost her memory after she became a dog. Does she really think that everyone is dying of hunger and is afraid that he too? He patted her on the head and said that what was at the base no longer concerns them. Here people don't die because they don't eat enough. She cannot worry and eat. He will earn points for them, and then they will come and eat until nausea. Aisha was very happy, and they continued to have dinner. After that, they returned to the hostel and smelled a very strange smell. Has anyone gone to the toilet? Why is the door to his room open? He looked inside and saw Christiana lying on the floor, belly up. He told Aisha to stay put and approached Christiana. Putting his hand to her nose, he realized that she was still breathing. With his technique, he checked the entire room. From the very beginning, a monster was chasing him. And then there was a situation with the base, as well as Zhang Ido and his father. But inside a Dao school, nothing like this should happen, right? He opened the curtain and realized that there was no ambush. He told Aisha that everything is fine and now she can enter. He asked Christiana what happened. She opened her eyes and when she saw them, she was very frightened. Why are they even looking at her like that? Zuobai asked if she didn't know she was asleep. The door was wide open when they returned. Christiana can't believe it because she was here. She only thinks that she wants to be strong and wants to open the divine scroll. He saw a sheet of paper on the table under her paws and pushed it away. On the table was a note written in red ink. But who wrote it? It turns out that the school is not as safe as he thinks. Suddenly someone started banging loudly in the next room. He decided to go out and see what was going on in the next room. Especially Christiana and Aisha persuaded him to do it. They went out into the corridor and saw a red glow coming from the next room. Who could be so reckless as to turn on such a light at night? He knocked on the door and asked if anyone was there. A girl with black hair and pale skin opened the door and asked if something happened. He was already frightened and said that he lived next door to her. He heard a lot of noise in her room and wanted to ask if he could help. The girl smiled and said that everything was in order, after which she closed the door with the same crash. They decided to go to bed. Zuobai began to fall asleep, thinking that it was difficult for him to get along with his roommate. Suddenly they jumped again at the loud sound in her room. How is he supposed to sleep in such conditions? The next day the lesson started. Chongyang says that now they will learn about the transformation of the five elements of yin and yang and how to use it so that they do not stray from the path of Tao. Everyone should remember the basics. Zuobai yawns and thinks his neighbor is sick. He was already tired of these endless knocks on the wall all night. He opened his eyes and wondered where he even was. Since childhood, students have been practicing the breathing technique and reading Taoist scriptures and have been preparing for their path for more than ten years. That is why they understand what is happening in this lesson. But Zuobai doesn't have any basic knowledge and doesn't understand anything at all. Because everyone is working so hard, he can't spend that precious time studying. With such thoughts, he went to bed, and his laziness scale began to increase. Jing Shu wondered, did he really sleep in class? All the students looked at him. Wang Sun wondered, how could he go to bed on the second day of class? And this is his friend. John Xing realized that this was a guy with character. Suddenly, a huge hand appeared above his head, and they were all very frightened. Chong Yang hit him with that hand and told him that he had been teaching at the school for twelve years. Zuo Bai is the first person who dared to sleep in his class. Zuo Bai realized that he was in a lot of pain. 
Laziness points farmed from 60 to 70. The fact that he slept all night did not give him anything, but the fact that he slept in class did something else. He told the teacher that when he sleeps, he takes in information more effectively. If it interferes with the teacher's lesson, then he will stop listening to his lesson. Everyone was taken aback by these statements. Chong Yang slammed his hand on the table and shouted that this was absurd. It's just outrageous. The city of Tong does not give him all the resources so that he jokes. He grabbed it with his hand and placed it beside him. He will stand the whole lesson. From now on, he will be following Zuo Bai in every class, so he won't even dare to be distracted even for a second. Zuo Bai hid himself and wondered why he even did that. The lesson ended and all the students went about their business. Chong Yang knows that Zuo Bai is a genius, and he also has a lot of talent, and he also won first place. But this does not mean that he can rest and not listen to the teacher. There are many geniuses who strayed halfway through cultivation. Zuo Bai thinks about how he didn't understand anything from all those lessons that were in the afternoon. No laziness points added either. He will not be able to study normally and will need to skip classes. He needs to become stronger in order to kill the heavenly demons. He has his own way. He saw the silhouette of a person outside the door who says that the student who won first place is sleeping in class. He can't believe he's sleeping in class. The man's hands are cut, and he says he won't let Zuo Bai sleep. The next lesson, Chong Yang went to class and saw that Zuo Bai didn't show up. Zuo Bai is standing near the office at this time. Skipping classes increases the laziness points farm. He apologizes to old man Yang, but he seriously doesn't understand his lessons. Christiana thinks it's good that he has his own room, because he can sleep for days on end without straining. Zuo Bai asked, What does she know about it? He needs to go to class so he doesn't get kicked out. Suddenly the door to the office slammed and Chong Yang ran after this scoundrel. When he found out that Zuo Bai was truant, he was going to catch him in his dorm room first so he couldn't escape. He is not his student, but he still needs to be taught. When Chong Yang returned, Zuo Bai went to a safe place called a hostel. He had to completely avoid contact with Chong Yang when he first started playing truant. Otherwise he would get hit on the head. He has a lot of fun playing with the teacher, but Christiana calls him a prankster. He came to the dorm and saw a note stuck in his door. On a piece of paper, it says that he understands that Zuo Bai is a capable boy, since he was the first on the list, but skipping classes is not very good. He will not force him to go to classes because he has his own way, but the school of Tao will not leave you so easily. Zuo Bai threw a piece of paper saying that old Yang gave up very quickly. It's no longer fun. After a while, he was lying in bed and his door began to break. Someone's voice yells for him to open the door. How long is he going to hide? He must come to evening classes. If he doesn't open the door now, he's done for. Zuo Bai went to the door, and when he opened it, he didn't see anyone. Maybe he's already hallucinating. The little girl calls out to him that she is here. He definitely did it on purpose. She's pissed off at this idiot. Zuo Bai realized that it was the Xiao Xiao who ranked 10th. Up close, it looks even smaller. He silently closed the door and she just started to go crazy with rage. Does he have any idea why he came here? How many people calmly make sacrifices so that they have time and materials for practice? But what does he do? She kept pounding on his door until tears came to her eyes. Her parents went to the front line five years ago and never returned. He is wasting his place in school and does not deserve it. Zuobai became very upset and stroked Aisha, who had tears in her eyes. He knows what this place is like. He does not care what she says about him, because he must become stronger. He activated another point in the disc and began to go crazy with this incredible power. His skin seemed to start to crack. After a while it finally ended. On the floor lay many skins from his skin. He activated three stars in a row to strengthen his flesh. Now conventional weapons can no longer harm him. At least when it comes to combat, he won't be seriously hurt anymore. He rose from the floor in one easy motion and said that practice without theory was too painful. But still he does not understand what is explained in the classroom. Christiana offers him a deal, but in that case he would give her the breathing method. Zuobai realized that she could go to the library and borrow some basic books to study on her own. He thanked her for her help and went to the library. He saw a man inside who said that for the time being, only the section with basic books was available to beginners. Zuobai thought he was a very strange administrator. To enter the library, he must use his spiritual power. Surprisingly, there is even a spiritual power lock at the entrance. 
The Taoist school has gone to great lengths to prevent students from being exposed to knowledge beyond their ability. Access granted, and he was wished good luck in his studies. After a while, he began sorting through the books and thought that this too was too difficult. He doesn't even have the basics. He took a stack of books that he can take for himself. Finally, it's time to practice. He sat down at the table and began to practice his favorite method, sleep. During the day, Christiana absorbed knowledge, and he received laziness points. The students were talking, is the library a place to sleep? At night, he continued to acquire basic knowledge. His laziness scores increased greatly after the afternoon nap. From now on, he will skip classes and sleep during the day to accumulate points, and at night he will study basic theory. He told Christiana to take a break. No matter how much she trains, she still won't be able to catch up with him. Christiana ordered him not to interfere with her. She is going to train to raise her spiritual power to 99. This is a very strange breathing posture. Is she sure she learned everything right? In the evening, he went home with a stack of books and heard someone's voice. With her standards, she won't pass her exams and will be expelled. Zuobai looked around the corner and saw his neighbor who said she would try hard. The guy told her that trying is not the main thing. The main thing is talent. She has reached the limit of what she can achieve in this life. There was only one last test left. Why shouldn't she pass it? She scratched her skin with her nails and started screaming that she would try. If he helps her, then she will stay. Zuobai wondered if there was a way to speed up cultivation. He remembered himself and realized that this was definitely not good. He can suffer greatly if he is greedy for advancement. Suddenly he lost his balance, and the books they started falling to the ground. The guy agreed and said that he would bring that thing. They turned at the sound of falling books. Zuobai came around the corner and greeted them. He had just returned from the library and stumbled in the street. The neighbor gave him a very creepy look. Creepy look. He said goodbye to them and went into his room. Throwing books on the table, he thought that he had very strange neighbors. He decided to take a book that would tell him how to feel spiritual power. A hallucination is the use of psychic energy to influence the five senses of a person. He thinks it's not enough to be physically strong, so he will borrow Jin Xu's notes and read it when he has time. The next room is unusually quiet today, and even a knock on the wall is not audible. At this time, the red light in the neighbor's room lit up again. John Xing lies in bed and thinks that Sun Chuan is snoring too loudly. Is it too late to apply for a change of roommate? Suddenly, they heard three loud knocks on the wall. John Xing got out of bed in anger because he couldn't sleep because of those knocks on the wall. Suddenly, he realized that his body was not moving. What's happening? He looked up and saw that hands made up of shadows grabbed Sun Chuan's neck and blood spurted from his mouth. A voice under the bed asked him why he was not sleeping. A shadow was gathering under his bed that said that now he would be the start of a great show. The next day, Zuobai came out of the room and saw the crowd of students and asked Xin Xu what happened. She greeted him and said that he finally decided to go out. Chong Yang tells the students to get out of the way as medics drag the bodies of the dead students. Jin Xu said that two students from their class were attacked. Sun Chuan, ranked seventh, died. Jian Xing, who placed fourth, is now in critical condition. Their bodies seemed to be withered, and the body of Sun Chuan was completely covered with a sheet. Zuobai said it was terrible and asked, who did it? Xin Xu began to whisper in his ear that it was rumored that the heavenly church had rebelled. They left their sign on the wall. Zuobai wondered how they had the courage to attack the school. Xiao Xu grabbed Xin Xu's hand and told her to ignore this idiot who was afraid to even leave the room. Jin Xu finally told him to be careful. Zuobai saw that the guy's room was sealed, and that strange neighbor lived next to them. He remembered her words that she would try if the guy helped her. He decided that safety was paramount. He answered the phone because he can't let this go on. He called police officer Li Xu Ju and told him about the heavenly church. He asked if someone was killed at the Tao school. The disciples are talking that this is all connected with the heavenly church. It is a human organization that rebelled against the heavenly court. They are trying to overthrow the heavenly court. They used all sorts of actions without fear, up to the killing of civilians. It's just a bunch of crazy people. It turned out that these are anti-government forces that will attack civilians and students. It seems that even in the school, the Tao is no longer safe. Suddenly, someone patted him on the shoulder and asked if he also thought that the church was behind all this. It turned out to be Shu Ju, 
who told him to be quiet. Zuo Bai doesn't think a single sign can tell them much without more solid evidence. So far it is impossible to draw any conclusions. Shuju understands this, but he has one more question. Zuo Bai said on the phone that he suspected the girl next door was having problems. But why didn't he tell the teacher about it first? Zuo Bai said that she was in danger of being expelled from school, and if he told the teacher, it could hurt her a lot. Which is why he wanted to sort this out with minimal repercussions. Shuju smiled as he didn't think Zuo Bai was that smart, even though he didn't look like that. He is a very nice guy. Zuo Bai took him to a room where every night there was a knocking sound. Shuju looked through the peephole and Zuo Bai asked if it would be too dangerous for them to directly investigate. Shuju, though young, is very strong. He put his hand on the door and used spiritual powers. There is some kind of seal inside that blocks the spiritual energy. Even he, if he intervened by force, could lead to irreversible consequences. They can't enter there until they have proof. The fact that she is working so hard to protect her room means that there is something very valuable to her. Shuju says that since they have nothing else to do before evening, he thinks he will have to stay here with Zuo Bai all night. Zuo Bai asked him for forgiveness for disturbing him and took him to his room. Shuju said it's still early. He will do a little research at the Taoist school to see if there are any traces of the church's activities. Zuo Bai can go to his room and wait for him. Until he returns, he advises him not to sleep. Sometime later at night, Zuo Bai was lying on a chair and still fell asleep. He woke up abruptly with an alarm clock in his hands and wondered how he even fell asleep. It's already very late. Why is Shu Ju still not here? He doesn't miss the meetings he makes, does he? The neighbor had already started banging on the wall with amazing force. Zuo Bai examined the wall and found that there were no cracks, although they were very strong knocks. But what is actually going on here? He had just heard that terrible sound. Immediately after that, something terrible happened. There is definitely something wrong with this room. He called to Aisha to run away from here and they ran to the door. He realized that his door was closed and activated spiritual powers. He started kicking his door with force, but it's just not possible. From spiritual power, this wooden door should have been opened in an instant. He can't break anything here, and his room is locked. He can do nothing in this case. How should he be? He has a bad feeling. All this is strange because even his room is closed. He saw that Aisha ran away and started to bark. He asked her what happened and why she was barking. He heard this terrible voice that asks him why he is not sleeping. His door was just kicked in. Mentally, Zuobai told Christiana to wake up because something was wrong here. Christiana is now training, so he has no hope left at all. Won't even Shuju come? His door began to finally break, and a black shadow gushed out of all the cracks. Zuobai fell to the ground and began to back away. Is it blood? What should he do if he can't fight back? Can he just sit and wait? He realized that if they had the power to kill him, they could just kill him with a Taoist spell. Why would they go through all these hardships? It turns out that they want to deceive him. He remembered the hallucinations and decided to calm down. He needs to use spiritual energy to sense the whole room. Of course, this was all just an illusion. The enemy is not as strong as he thinks. He started screaming and ordered the coward to come out. The door collapsed, and the terrible creature said his name. It turned out to be Shu Ju who punched him in the face and ordered him to wake up. Looks like he hasn't woken up yet, which means he needs another hit. Zuo Bai asked him to stop. The illusion he was under was removed. There is no blood, which means that the illusion was strong enough. He asked Shu Ju if he caught this magic caster. Shu Ju says it looks like the girl from the next room. Zuo Bai has a rather strong muzzle. His arm hurts. Zul. They went out into the corridor and decided to go into her room. Zuo Bai felt this terrible stench and saw the seals on the wall in front of him, as well as on the floor. There were piles of books and candles in the room, and the neighbor herself hung on the wall. They chained her to the wall and wrote the same hieroglyphs that were in the messages. Her entire body was written in hieroglyphs, and she seemed to be completely unconscious. Zuo Bai clenched his teeth and asked who did it. Shu Ju says it's her. On the wall was written the word, Pass the Exam. He remembered her words, and realized that she had surrendered to the dark forces. He did say that this girl was going to be expelled from school. Shu Ju says she doesn't have enough talent, but she tried to get higher and this is the result. Zuo Bai approached her and saw that her body was made of paper. Shu Ju says that her body is so monstrously thin that she can pass through any openings. Her head is not completely deformed yet, 
She was banging her head, and that's why everyone heard these loud knocks on the wall. She probably did it in order to prevent complete annihilation. The path of the Tao is very difficult for ordinary people. If Zuo Bai didn't have a system, would he be able to excel in Tao in school? Xu Ju says that he was waiting outside, and when he found Zuo Bai unconscious, he burst into the room. As soon as he began to wake him up, he blocked her path, and she killed herself. There was indeed something in the room that she had so carefully guarded. Maybe it was pride, because she really did not want to be expelled from school. Sometime later, the medics began to carry away her paper body on a stretcher. Zuo Bai thanked Officer Xu Ju because he finally made it known. Xu Ju says that in addition, they can only be sure that this girl lost control and attacked Zuo Bai and the others. They still have a lot to explore. Zuo Bai. I saw the name Wei Dong, age 19, in his documents. This is the guy who was talking to her outside her room. He saw teacher Chung Yang in the crowd and realized that now they would begin to read morality to him. Chung Yang approached him and asked if he hadn't been to class for a long time. Could it be because of the neighbors? Now that everything is decided, he cannot be afraid and come to class. Zuo Bai blushed and told the teacher that he would miss class again. He has his own approach to cultivation, and conventional methods do not help him. Chung Yang became furious and said that the Tao School of Tung City had been in existence for over 100 years. In writing all the books and methods, they have lost thousands of wise men. There were many sacrifices, and it took a lot of work to make what they are now enjoying. Although he is not as good as his predecessors, he is still 56% a monk of the Fifth Realm. Does Zuo Bai think that he would be better able to study on his own than with him? Zuo Bai told the teacher that he could return to his studies and gradually become stronger. But this is still not the path he wants to take. He was given a gift that no one else has. He must become stronger faster in order to quickly kill the heavenly demons. He asked him not to get in his way. Chong Yang was dumbfounded by his words and told him not to make a fuss. In two months there will be a test for the chance of self-learning. He will tell him right away that since he missed two months of classes, if he fails the test, then he will be expelled. Zuo Bai says that if he doesn't pass the test, it means he's not that talented. He will follow all the rules and will definitely cope. He's still number one on the list. He apologized to the teacher for offending him. He is an excellent teacher and he is very sorry that he could not attend his lessons. After these words, he turned around and left. Chong Yang remembered Xu Yi's words that the path of monasticism is a matter of individual will, a matter of choosing one's future. He fears that only they can control it. He looked after him and told that jerk not to be a hero. Without a victory, he may not return, and he has only two months. Zuo Bai raised his hand and said that he would definitely win. He will not give up and he can do everything for the sake of revenge. No one will take better care of him than himself. He walked into the room and realized that the promises he made were based on emotion. First he needs to sleep, and then work out. It's time to work harder. As he slept, Christiana jumped on him and ordered him to see her power. This time she is going to take his life. Giggling wickedly, she directed her powers right at him, but nothing changed at all. But how is this possible? She continued to torment him, and finally he could not stand it and hit her with his hand telling her to stop. He woke up and saw a bunch of energy on his arm. Christiana says that this is her key sword. It took her several days to raise her spirit power to 99, and she also reached the first star of the Divine Sword Disc, Sword Key. But why didn't her attack work on him? Zuobai says that the three star dots he lit are for protection, and he also has enough points to open the next star dot. Christiana says that he needs to try so hard and she only needs to put in points. Had he been writhing in pain recently? Zuo Bai said that he just needed theoretical knowledge. After all the time he spent studying, he gained a deep understanding of spiritual power. She wouldn't understand anything if he told her. Christiana started laughing and said that the five elements of spiritual energy meant five states, the birth, growth, flourishing, decline, and extinction of spiritual energy. It's not about the five spiritual states. Zuo Bai asked, where did she get such knowledge from? Maybe she knows something else? Christiana says that once she raised her spiritual power to 99, she remembered a bit of spiritual theory. Unfortunately, she had to do housework for this stupid child every day. She is very angry with him. Zuo Bai started petting her and said it was just a misunderstanding. From now on, he will do all the housework in this room. She said that he was a good boy, 
and in that case she would be reluctant to give him some advice. A week later, he began to study better since he had a teacher. With the current theoretical base, he is confident that he will be able to activate another point. He opened two more points and his bones began to crackle. It's annoying, but it's much easier than last time. It seems to him that even his bones have become even stronger. But still, this star point is different from the last one. The system warns him that he must stand like iron, sit as hard as steel, lie down like a mountain in order to activate the defensive formation. It seems to him that this is a very good defense. He needs to find an opponent to try this, because Christiana will definitely not hurt him. He wondered who would be nice to practice with. Suddenly there was a knock on his door. John Shing asked if he was here. He wants to tell him something important. Can he open the door? Zuobai wondered. Wasn't he seriously injured? John Shing says they don't know each other well. If he talks to him, he will treat him to food. In that case, Zuobai immediately opened the door. I am Does he mind if he takes the dog with him? He agreed, and Zuobai said that he always thought he was a good person, and he was sure he was his brother. John Shing asked if he would go in home clothes. Zuobai started laughing and said that he would change his clothes now. They came to the sports ground, and Zuobai said they should stop walking, or they might be late for dinner. So what did he want to talk to him about? John Shing started releasing his spiritual energy and said that he was jealous of Zuobai's talent. He is ten times stronger and smarter than a normal human. Zuobai said that probably not ten, but twenty times. He discreetly told Aisha to go to safety. A spirit hand appeared over John Shing, and he said that he was very upset. His head turned back and his face began to crack. He wants to be like that too. He started attacking Zuobai with his strong spiritual energy. This exceeds the limit of 99 and is very dangerous. Christiana screams that it is not a spiritual force, but an evil spirit. This incredible power seemed to explode, and John Ching asked if he had already died. The fact that he is a genius is just words, because he is not worth dying for him. Suddenly he saw that Zuobai was just lounging around and raising his defenses. He doesn't hurt at all. The technique of lying like a mountain is simply beautiful. Jian Xing got angry and told him to run away from here immediately. He does not want to hurt him, and tears flow from his eyes. Zuobai believes him and runs away. He yells at Christiana to help him. It is very difficult for him to keep defensive technique. Christiana sees nothing and spits three swords with spiritual power directly at the evil spirit. There are too many evil spirits, and with her eyes closed, she is not very comfortable. He has to deal with it himself, but Zuobai can only scream for help. John Shing found this cat with pink swords very interesting. He crawls lying down. But what are these games? From his body came the spirit of a neighbor who asked if this guy is not trash, right? She won't let him escape. Suddenly, a voice behind her said that she had finally shown herself. Shu Ju touched John Shing's body and said that it was possible to save him. He ordered her to stand up because she no longer had a chance to win. She went on the attack and ordered him to die and not interfere with her. He grabbed her by the head with one easy movement and said that apparently she did not want to in a good way. With one movement of his fist, he dissolved her body in the air, leaving only one head. She must survive because he still has a few questions for her. This girl's name is Ying Zi. She was very angry at this guy with over a thousand points of spiritual power even though he is still so young. Shu Ju told her not to worry. He had a couple of questions for her. She did her best to pass the exam, and then she tried to connect with a person in order to become stronger. He understands all this, but she kept banging on the wall. Did she want to use Zuo Bai to get out of the hole she was in? She had everything planned from the beginning. She even left signs behind her to scare him. Zuo Bai was surprised that he even knew about those signs. But why did Ying Zi do this? Yingzi says that at the age of three she started reading Taoist scriptures, and at the age of ten she started breathing techniques, giving everything for cultivation. And this guy Zuo Bai is just wasting his talent. Xu Ju asked if the rumors about him being uneducated are true. Zuo Bai said that this is a lie and it's not true at all. Xu Ju said it didn't make sense, and she had an instigator. The method of disembodiment of the spirit, and the method of taking possession of the body, are the most forbidden techniques. Even teachers of the fifth realm cannot learn this at will. How did she get these techniques? Ying Zi asked if he forgot about the church. It was they who gave her these techniques. She means the man on the flyer. Her boyfriend used her and ran away. They policemen know more about the church than she can imagine. 
they used her longing to control her. Their purpose, perhaps, is to cause an even greater catastrophe. Let her tell everything she knows. Yingzi says that there are actually people. She did not have time to finish, and they saw a bright flash in the distance and three people. Zuo Bai thought they were teachers from high school. They directed a bright beam directly at Yingzi, and Shu Ju yelled at them not to do it. The beam hit her, breaking the seal, and she began to crumble into small petals. Shu Ju shouts that the interrogation was in full swing. Why are they killing their students? Xin Jun, who possesses the fifth spiritual realm, said that he was a sinner who broke a great taboo and harmed others. That is why the school came to clean up the mess. He asked Officer Li what was the problem. Shu Ju said that there is no problem. It's just that the elders' tactics are very similar to killing to silence, which is very suspicious. Xin Jun asked, suspicious? He had his eye on him for a long time. He's the most important person in town, so why is he running an undercover investigation? Maybe he doesn't trust their school or something? Zuobai intervened and told the master that he had hired an officer because he had already helped him more than once. He has his own thoughts on this matter. Xin Jun said that maybe Zuobai is fine, but if something happens, he should immediately tell the teacher. He must be careful because bad people can use him. Shu Ju said that he should be more careful because the man behind the screen is very interested in him. He must be more careful, otherwise next time he may not be so lucky. After that, they began to give instructions to the police and doctors. Christiana said, Officer Lee is very nice and caring, but this teacher is clearly hiding something, so they need to be careful. Zuobai said that really, couldn't the teacher destroy all the evidence for the sake of the students? Why did they come on time? Maybe they knew where he was. Christiana spread her hands and said that people are too complicated. There are always dangers, and there is no point in always thinking about it because the most important task of Zuobai is to continue training and quickly gain strength, as well as protect yourself. The next day he lay in bed and thought it was very strange. He asked Christiana why the system is broken and he can't pump the star point any further. Christiana says that he has reached the peak of spiritual power, so 99 points is not enough. If he wants to continue cultivating, then he needs to increase his degree of cultivation. Zuobai heard this, and immediately jumped out of bed as he needed to study. He asked Master Christiana to teach him. She used to know everything, but now she has forgotten a little. He can improve it with laziness points, so she thinks he can try a little. Zuobai remembered Ying Zi and wondered if this would happen to him, right? He decided to forget about it because he does not want to go crazy yet. Does not want he will not increase spiritual strength because he needs to learn more about it. Knowledge is power, but he feels like he will have to borrow notes from Jin Shu. He sneaked into class and approached her, greeting her. She was very frightened, and he asked her if she could lend him notes. She was very surprised that he returned, but he said that he was not here for the lessons but simply came to borrow notes. She handed him the notebook, but it was stolen by Xiao Xie, who asked him how dare he come and borrow notes from others. All of his classmates turned to look at him. Liu Xian, who placed fifth in the exam, said it was a waste of resources. Du Bing, who placed sixth in the exam, said it was the return of the prodigal son. Zuo Bai told her that it was none of her business. She would return the notes to him. Xiao Xi started yelling at Jing Xu not to lend her notes to this guy, let him go to class instead. Jing Xu apologized to him, but he really needs to go to class because cultivation is a very dangerous thing. Xiao Xi said that since he heard everything, he could get out of here. If he does not attend classes, then he is not welcome here. Zuobai got very angry with this damned girl, but suddenly someone handed him the notes and said that he would lend him the notes. Zuobai thanked him, and Wang Sun said that Zuobai needed a friend to help him. He opened the notebook and saw drawings of naked women. He threw the notebook in his face, and Wang Sun started yelling at him not to leave. It's all his experience, doesn't he want to take it? He will not owe anything, but will only treat him. Zuobai was unlucky and decided to find another way. He left the classroom and saw Zuo Dao there, who had heard that he did not go to class. His opponent shouldn't be so dumb. Zuo Bai realized that everyone here was against him. They may or may not believe, but he will soon surpass them all. Zuo Dao gave him his notebook and said that this is what he learned before coming here. This is raising the degree of cultivation to 1%. He can take it and learn. If he does not understand anything, then he can come to the hostel at night and ask him questions. He will train him. In a month and a half, he and his class will be beaten. 
It's a flawless victory. After saying that, he left, and Zuobai breathed a sigh of relief. But he still wins. After that, Zuobai came to the library and realized that Zuodao was a real scholar. These notes could be sold like a real textbook. The records not only describe in detail each step of the process of raising the degree of cultivation, but also give the name of the handbooks. This is a very great help. During this week of training, Zuobai should try to increase his degree of cultivation. After that, he asked the administrator how he could get into the hidden cultivation room. Can he help him? The administrator pressed a button and a staircase appeared under Zuobai leading down. He went down and was met by another absolutely the same administrator, who said that the hidden rooms were here. He will lead it. It was created at great loss and expense by the creators of their school. Risks have been reduced to a minimum. Even in this case, the degree of demonization is quite high. He should be more careful. Zuobai entered a room that contained a table, a chair, and a textbook. This is the Tao Ching, the treasury of the Tao Wei a complete collection of the religious and philosophical literature of Taoism. He remembered those people who couldn't handle the cultivation. Christiana said that if he died, she would take care of the dog instead of him. She will also take the system for herself. Zuo Bai started yelling at her and told her to shut up and leave him alone. But didn't Zuo Dao's recordings help him? He has filled in various ways of parsing cryptic metaphors, so he has nothing to worry about. He opened the textbook and knowledge seemed to surround him, Progress began to increase every second and he began to hear those whispers. It's very strange, but he can't do anything about it. He should not pay attention to it, not remember it. Try to pretend that he did not hear anything. Small silhouettes of black spirits began to envelop him, and he closed the book. This illusion is all too real, and it seems to him that embarking on this path will be more difficult than he expected. It will take him a few more tries to get it right. He opened the book again. He can't do anything and he has to concentrate. He can't ignore it all. He gave up and closed the book, because he can't do it anymore. Christiana said that Zuo Dao was able to increase the degree of cultivation by 1% in half an hour, and he is still at 0.4% in four hours. He was very tired and flopped down on the floor, but he remembered that since this technique protects him very well, maybe it will help him. He decided to try again and opened the book. The whisper returns and it seems to him that it does not work. He saw that the spirits had become much smaller, which meant that the technique of lying like a mountain not only protected in battle, but also protected against contamination by celestial distortions while increasing the degree of cultivation. Christiana told him to give up, because they can come another time, and they do not need to spend the night here. Zuobai said that lying down improves the degree of cultivation. In just a few minutes, it hit 0.7%. Christiana was very surprised that lying like a mountain has such an effect. She was very angry because of this brat. Zuobai can't help it. He's a true genius. Because of the somersault, his nose bled, and the spirits around him turned into devils. He crashed to the ground and looked at the footprints of evil spirits that were stained with blood. Christiana tried to yell at him and said that if he didn't wake up, she would eat him. He is very cold and she started screaming that he is a stupid lazy fool, but she doesn't want him to die. Zuobai grabbed her paw and told her not to worry. He wouldn't die that easily. He just stood up too abruptly, and his body didn't have time to adapt to it. Luckily, the room is covered in anti-warp runes, otherwise it would have been a disaster. When he was lying down, he pumped spiritual strength with the help of laziness points. After his cultivation degree increased, his strength limit also exceeded 99. Now his spiritual strength is 136. Every 1% of laziness raises his maximum strength limit by only 100 points. He sighed heavily, because it prevents him from becoming stronger. Christiana got angry, and told him to go to hell. Some time later, he arrived at the school's material support department. His head still hurts a little. According to Zuo Dao's notebook, there should be free recovery pills in the office, and he can also take some pills for Christiana. He met Liu Xian, who asked if he wasn't the genius who won first place in the entrance test, did he come here for resources? Zuobai doesn't even remember who it is. Liu Xian threw his jacket on the floor and asked this youngster how he had the conscience not to know who he was. They should get to know each other. He is interested in learning his knowledge when he hasn't even attended assignments. How about sparring with him? Suddenly someone called out to him and asked if he was going to mock Zuobai's genius. Du Bing jumped down and said that no monk would be allowed to bully the weak. 
Liu Xian raised his hands and asked how dare he mock Zuo Bai as he greatly admires the talent of the first place student. He didn't have to be nervous, because Liu Xian was just joking. They started to leave and Du Bing turned around, telling Mr. Zuo Bai that everything was fine. But Zuo Bai had already run away to the hostel. A brute with muscles almost fell on him. It was just a waste of his time. He entered the room and shouted to Aisha that he had brought some food. Suddenly he saw a bitten book on the floor, and a huge monster near the curtain which was devouring a wooden chair. Aisha, with glowing eyes and saliva from her mouth, looked at him and moved straight towards him.